What's that? I'm at the square truck next one. Saturday, biggest match of my career against Ultra Dragon. And now I have to wrestle with no warning. McNamara put the title on the line. I'm always ready, but I wasn't ready for that. It was a square circle screw job. You know what? You know what? Square circle, let's go. You screwed me. I'm gonna screw you right back. Tomorrow, I was supposed to sign all day. I was supposed to wrestle Ultimo Dragon. Well, f that. I'm going home. And now, Squared Circle Expo presents. And now, Squared Circle Expo presents. The Reign of Champions. Major news, there's a new space. 
face of Square Trickle Expo, a brand new reigning heavyweight champion, Nick Nemeth. How dare you even use, how dare you even use the term major when describing what happened. Square Circle Expo screw job. Matt Cardona was not prepared for match. Just what, for the fans? For the fans who decided to give them this extra? No. Well, that ends the uh, legacy of the Squared Circle Expo Championship. Last held, last held by Matt Cardona. And a new era begins. House rejoices. This championship is beautiful. How are we doing it, Andy? I'm not going to waste too much of your time. I'm fighting in the main event against one of the greatest of all time. And it's going to be worth it because this championship is even prettier than it was before. Unwelcome interruption in Nick Nemeth's victory speech. Good. As it seems, the contenders are already getting in line. Jake Oman makes his presence known. Jake Oman, former Squared Circle Expo champion. One of the final real champions before our paper champion, Nick Nemeth, oh, was crap. Well, I'm telling it like it is. Uh, Colin Rodolfo trying to get in between uh, what could be a volatile situation. Hit him. Listen, I know you are emotional. I know you're in a volatile mood. But please, some decorum. This is supposed to be a I have moment. decorum. I have decorum. My best friend in the entire world, Matt Cardona, was screwed last night. My best friend. Look at those.
are the new Square Circle Expo Heavyweight Champion. I'm here to wish you congratulations, but with one tiny little caveat. You see, my focus isn't on that tonight, it's on Matt Riddle, the New Japan World Television Championship. But after my business with Matt Riddle is finished, the focus goes right back on that. And until then, wear with pride, congratulations. Why, Stern, congratulations, but with a caveat, perhaps, that Nick Nemeth should be watching his back. Jake Oman looks to go international in his championship victory tonight, but he still has his eyes on the prize Jake Oman first made famous. Oh, well, he does, and look, that's great. That he, but If I were him, I'd be focused on Riddle right now. Don't look towards the future. Don't look towards a future match a year from now. Focus on where you are right now tonight. Consider right there, that is a man, Nick Nemeth, taking nothing away from him, one of the most talented people in this profession. But he screwed Matt Cardona. He was a part of this. He's complicit in you what got, happened to Matt Cardona last night. You got boo-boo face. I want to talk about the real championship. championship. It's going to be on the line. Step to Lander, Ari Alexander. How about the NWA World's title on the line? EC3 and Carson Drake. But, Josh, that's not all. So much more still to come as well. Oh, we have Jack Vaughn versus Tony Gunn. The OVW Championship, It's this is not a championship match, this is a number one contenders match. Title changed hands recently, and then, of course, the main event, the Squared Circle Expo Championship, I guess we'll call it the Interim Championship. Nick Nemeth defends against the Ultimo Dragon. We will not call it the Interim Championship. Oh, Your boy that. Cardono's out of here, and now we're gonna head to the ring and officially kick off in-ring action this year for Squared Circle Expo. All right. Well, Tri-State Wrestling, based in Cincinnati, Ohio, TriStateWrestlingOnline.com, TSW Pro Wrestling across social media channels. And this, you talk about inaugural champions, the first to wear the gold, DSK, travel all the way from the New York region to conquer the Midwest. And DSK has a record that still stands, not just the first, but the longest reigning TSW champion, but the clock is quite literally ticking on VSK's record. It could end at the stroke of midnight tonight. Well, it's not going to end. A new reign is going to begin. That's what's going to happen. VSK will walk out of here champion. Look at him. He's in the best shape of his life. VSK a year ago was at the top of his game. Now he's even higher than that. VSK, rich resume, all his own. Victories he has obtained in PSW. Successful title defense. Won the inaugural title tournament. But this man has quite a bit of controversy on his plate. Once upon a time, Trey Lamar and Myron Reed were friends. But a rift began to form and really uh, was amplified a year ago in Square Circle Expo. Was Trey Lamar putting his nose in Myron Reed's business no. where it didn't belong? And Josh, the end result of that was Trey Lamar cashing in a poker chip that guaranteed him a title match against his supposed friend after Myron had had a long title defense. Didn't do it man on man when the stakes were fair. No, he absolutely did. He, he didn't take advantage of anything. What he did was he followed the rules. He earned an opportunity and he cashed it in. Was he gonna wait? He's gonna wait until the guy's 100%? Why? BSK.
Josh, I'm very curious to see what the uh, X factor of this matchup is to me, and that's the reaction of the live crowd because BSK and Trey Lamar have done nothing to endear themselves to the TSW faithful in Cincinnati. Uh, certainly both these men have a reputation for being great wrestlers, but have taken some shortcuts to get where they are. Well, first of all, we're not in Cincinnati, thank God. Oh. We're here in India. Well, I guess it's not that much better. But VSK, look, they don't have to respect VSK. They don't have to respect Trey Lamar. It doesn't matter. Neither of these men care what these fans think. And I'm not trying to make light of that. They don't. They're focused on that championship. That's where their focus is right now. A VSK extending a hand. Focus of Trey Gentlemen. Lamar is as VSK looking for a handshake. But the question is, does Trey Lamar trust VSK? And to that point, can VSK trust Trey Lamar? Well, I think, that, look, you're looking at two very trustworthy people, but in the heat of battle, a lot can happen. See, look at that. Both went to sucker punch the other. Okay, oh, seconds there, and now they both went for the kick. This is can you top this right from Jump Street? Uh, PSK, the veteran, hits a side to headlock. PSK, the inaugural TSW champion, October 2022, when he defeated Dalton Castle, Eric James, and yes, Trey Lamar in a four way tournament final matchup. And he has uh, survived against. So many challenges since then. I remember a victory over Carlito on that road for BSK. I remember a, a, a victory over oh, this pace. Quick gear to Trey Lamar takedown. The only person that BSK couldn't beat was Myron Reed. But Myron Reed had that title about three minutes until Trey Lamar made his intentions known. I don't see what the big deal is. That is what Trey Lamar was supposed to do. He was supposed to look for an opportunity. He earned it. He earned it in getting that poker chip. Look at this. Look at the athleticism. Yeah. Trey fire. Lamar from both men, but oh, a back elbow. And great high trick hang time by Trey Lamar. Josh, you're 100% right. Trey Thank earned you. the shot. But a lot of people would have liked Trey to be a little bit more of a stand up man about claiming the win and the wear. Let me ask you a question. Those people who wish that would have happened, how many championships did they held? And I'm not talking about the replicas that they carry around with them all day like they won them in a parking lot somewhere. I'm asking you honestly, where are these people? A lot of times, because one of them is Myron Reed, and he's won title. Oh, Myron, Myron Reed. Reed, he doesn't count. Oh. Of course, he's got sour grapes. Myron Reed emotionally feels like VSK feels right now in the corner there. Well, VSK has not received his return matchup for that title since his loss to Myron until now, here and tonight. VSK, 267 days as TSW champion, and Trey Lamar's reign. Oh, oh is wow. Is equal of that right now? Looks there are no mats outside here, just to let you know. Oh, and Lamar back first against that steel guardrail. That is reinforced. Got him right where he wants and does VSK. Got him in a headlock. VSK is not a flashy competitor, doesn't pretend to be. He's ground and pound, he's straightforward, he's in your face. He gets the most out of all the fundamentals. Look at there. That. As I say that, he flies, and a seamless senton making me look cool. Well, no, it's, look, it's not about flash, it's about talent, it's about ability. To count in the ring, Lamar gets the shoulder up quickly. I will say, for my money, VSK and Trey Lamar, across the entire scope of pro wrestling, may be two of the most underrated talents you're going to find anywhere in this country. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. This referee trying to get oh. involved there. And with the assist inadvertently, you see VSK use that veteran acumen. And oh, gets a near fall on Trey Lamar. Trey Lamar originally trained by Johnny Gargano, Candice LeRae, so certainly a uh, championship pedigree in his upbringing in pro wrestling. DSK, I think, is looking to slow down this pace, keep Trey Lamar in his grasp, in his clutches, doesn't want to get caught off guard. And as he should, Trey Lamar, we've already seen the height that he can get, the speed that he has. I know it didn't work out for DSK this time. Trey Lamar is a hair quicker. He looks to be abusive, get elusive. They got caught in the corner. Another corner coming up. Oh, no. Couldn't keep the grip. Trey Lamar pushes off. And, yeah, that, that sound, that high yeah. shriek of BSK tells a story. 
Referee should probably stop this, that type of an injury. But VSK, stop it. We have an important title through. match. Well, you get hit in your VSKs. That's tough to continue. Part of wrestling, pal. Sometimes things happen. Roll up on oh. the corner, caught on a Pele. VSK taking a breather, as he should. He's entitled to a, a 10 count or a 20 count. I'm not exactly sure what the rules are here. Squared Circle Expo. I guess there are no rules if you factor in what happened oh. to Matt Cardona. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I thought Cardona was supposed to be always ready, and now you're out well, he's always not He's always ready. He, was, he made sure that he was always ready and always prepared oh. for Ultimate Dragon. But look at this. Talk about always ready. VSK wasn't ready for a Trey Lamar cheap shot. And oh. in with a toe paste to Reseda. That's how you pay the big bucks to be in the front row there. So you can get a Trey Lamar in your lap. I can't deny Trey Lamar's offense is so pretty. It's so scintillating. It's so oh. impactful. Cross body, shoulders down. Two count only. BSK, a dominant champion, 267 days, has held victories over Byron Reed, Stephen Wolf, Carlito in that run. Could he make history and be the first two-time champion? The odds are long now as Trey Lamar maybe looking to finish this thing off, maybe looking to finish it, but BSK sends Lamar back into the corner. Well, it looks like uh, VSK tried to flick something out of, uh, out of Lamar's eye there. Out of his eye, come it's on. Very now. kind of him. Yeah, very kind of you to give the benefit of Oh, code breaker off the ropes there. Wow. And, wow. That, and a back breaker. We got all kinds of breakers. I see breaking it. Stringing the offense together, but can't put them away. Well, Marv was going for that dream chaser a moment ago, and VSK knows firsthand and from watching his footage that that in all likelihood means the end. But with his calculated counter, BSK renewed life as he takes a chance. Oh, he rolls through. Caught himself well, just like his face caught that. Oh! Trey Lamar got a need. High strikes back and forth. Trey Lamar uses the quickness and BSK out of his feet. The referee trying to get involved in this match. He is inappropriate. BSK pulled the official in the path of Lamar, and now BSK looking to steal it, but a kick out. You know, all the folks from Tri-State Wrestling, they are watching right now, bated breath, to see if there's a new champion to be crowned. Look at that. Oh, you know what, I think we actually missed the three count. We, we did not, well, oh, that doesn't we matter to BSK. Champion. That is not his. Not at all. Well, he handed it to him. No, he did Oh, he shouldn't have that championship in there. Trey Lamar took a swing. BSK tried to set Lamar for failure. Wait a minute, two. There we oh, go. No, 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 no. What? Referee waves it off, waves it off. BSK has feet all over the ropes. The referee's hand hit the No, three. he was just trying to get out of the ring because he had won. Trey Lamar, the roll up. Two of Trey Lamar finds a victory. Hoisted by his own guitar, Trey Lamar used the same strategy VSK tried to steal a win in a title ring with Trey Lamar out conniving, out cheating the veteran tonight. And Josh, that means at midnight, Trey Lamar hits day 268. He breaks the record for longest reigning champion in TSW history. Listen, turnabout is fair play. And VSK tried one thing, and then Trey Lamar tried another thing, tried the same thing, as a matter of fact, and it worked for one, didn't work for the other. Those are the breaks. That's what happens. That's why I don't bring my own petard. I can never be hoisted by it. Well, I would want to see you do it in public anyway. Up next, I want to see this happen in public, an eight-person mixed tag team matchup. I think we just got some of the weirdest characters we could find here in Indianapolis and put them all together. Check out that enigmatic group. That's a, that's, that's a group of a lot of talented people in the ring right there. And you, I'm going to tell them that you called them enigmatic, enigmatic characters. You can't pronounce it. Well, I don't need to pronounce it. Let's go back to the ring. What? Oh, shell, yeah. Shark boys here. Oh, my god. You got your shark salute going? Put your hand on your forehead. No, no, thank you. Do it. I'm going to sit right here. 
the most shameless yeah, shark in the world. Look at that. I can do it like, like that, like that. I'm very comfortable sitting over here not doing that. Hey, you're using only one finger. That's not how it works. Shark Boy saluting all of his Finn followers. What a lovable veteran. This match is an eight-person tag team match. We need some authority in there for what we've seen so far tonight. Who's more intimidating than the Shark, right? You really want me to answer that? No. I want you to be in a better mood. Have some fun. You've been talking here all day. You know, I'm in a great mood. I was in a great mood until what happened last night. But we're going to move on from that. That's okay. the past. That's the past, and, and tonight, Nick Nemeth is going to lose that championship to the Ultimo Dragon, and all will be right with the world, or at least in the right direction. But right now, who do we have coming to the ring? Barbie killer. Oh, Barbie Blank has left the building. She was here at one of the stage shows earlier. Uh, it's been an eventful weekend throughout the expo, but wait a minute. Oh, God, they're here. More on uh, the Guiding Light Matthew Taylor in a moment, how he's assembled this group of spirits. It's time for the Headbangers Ball. Oh, my God. Look at that look. Oh dear. Josh, have you ever been in a mosh pit? Uh, no, I am, I'm proud to say I haven't been. The Headbangers. The embodiment of thrash metal, of Marilyn Manson, Pantera, that old movement in the 1990s that's still going strong all these They're years. They're still just holding on. They're just holding on to, holding on for dear life to a to a, a, a time that we'd like to forget. Hey, real men were screwed. That's fine. Look, I'm not here. It's 2024. I'm not here to judge. But what I'm saying is these guys, they come out here. I've, I've been familiar with their Tom Fullery. I know what they do when they're out here. And now they've got Kevin Thorne. And now this is... Not to mention Heather Owens. Hey, Heather Owens, pound for pound, maybe the toughest individual on this entire card here tonight. Kevin um, Thorn is is massive. He's what six foot five or six, still built like a house. The headbangers and captain of this team have uh, found very formidable friends to stand by the side. Throwing his uh, his entrance attire into the crowd there. That guy just tried to. It's already. I'm getting a listing notification on eBay. Well, we'll see uh, what notification this guiding light Matthew Taylor can give to his uh, group of... What are, what are we looking at here on uh, on Thrasher's undergarment? How deeply detailed do you want to get? You know what? I, I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather you not. Not at all. Shark Boy sound for the bell. And we're going to start things out, it looks like, with Thrasher and the essential Paul... Hubris all the way from Scotland, an 11-year pro, uh, broke into the sport at just age 13. Is that a giant lemon? I, I don't... Headbanger crash, of course, the Headbangers. It was September 1997. The Headbangers became World Tag Team Champions in a four-way matchup. Pitting the team of Owen Hart and Davey Boy Smith. That is championship decorated personified. And oh, here comes wow. the double team. And you see right there, look, take nothing away from them. Their antics as Thrasher is squeezing the derriere of one of our cameramen right now. 
the, the antics of the headbangers can be a little bit exhausting, but you can't take anything away from their talent. They are just as good as they've ever been. So the headbangers always love to throw you off your game. The tactics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not, not gonna throw me off my game. Let's listen in. Yeah. Oh. Well, the essential Paul Hubris making an essential ice pack. Following this matchup, the headbangers have their way. Oh, the thud. An impact that resonates. Knocked the hubris right out of him. Throughout this entire hotel. And now it's time for the big heavy hitter to have his turn. There isn't even a tag. Oh, oh my. Kevin Thorne didn't even need the bear hand. Oh no. Uh, I feel bad for Shark Boy. He's lost all control. Yeah, but that was what, 20 years ago? At this point, just stop feeling bad for him. Oh, that may have been the loudest one. What a hard shot. The future of your business is here. With Wix, you get advanced AI capabilities. For more customization. You have three people on the other side of the ring saying, you know what, I think I'm okay. I don't know that I need to get in here. And there's a cover by Headbanger Hodge. Assistant brand Cooper skips out very quickly. Matthew Taylor is trying to to preach some of his dogma in the headbanger box, but the uh, banger's not listening to content you create. Instantly transform. Oh, wow. Uh, double flapjack, Midnight Express-esque. And Thrasher now tags in frequent tags by Team Headbanger. I'm gonna say Team Headbangers, they are really, they're really working together well here. This whole team, the four of them. Kevin Thorne practicing that uh, vampire-like lifestyle, right? I mean, not quite the same as the headbangers, but... Uh, no, I mean, he drinks blood. Has that been proven? Nice take down. If that's the case, I hope for the sake of Paul Hubris, he doesn't get thirsty during this match. When I talked about the, the teamwork from Team Headbangers, but the other team hasn't had an opportunity to really show any teamwork. That's true. This has been all Team Headbangers. And I put that on Matthew Taylor because he preached long. Oh, what was that? Out. There's a cheap shot. Oh, he was, no, he was so shocked by what he was seeing, he, he did a spit tape. Yeah, exactly, something like that. And Matthew Taylor going to reap the benefits. Somebody who takes advantage of people at their emotional weakest. Some have compared Matthew Taylor to a cult-like influence on people that listen to his word. And Sharkboy right. try to keep control, and there's Taylor on the outside. Sharkboy has absolutely no control. He has no control, Joe. It's four on one. Well, Shark's got control of half of the ring. It's just not the half that's doing any of the cheating. Well, yeah, it's the easy half. And what do you mean by cheating? An illegal four-on-one. There was only not one legal individual. Illegal. That's not illegal if you're not caught. Well, Shark Boy's counting now. That gentleman in the chair over there, he's a security. He's going to get involved. He's had a rough night already. Oh, would you like a thorn in your lap? Matthew, Don't answer that. Matthew Taylor, so influential, oh. somebody that can look in your eyes with all sincerity, tell you whatever you need to hear as a two count by Hooks, a former butcher named that way after his uh, propensity and expertise in using meat hooks. And I would suggest from some of the rumors and reports I've heard, he didn't just use those meat hooks on the job. He used them in uh, uh, some what of are, his fights on the streets too. What are you implying? I'm implying he's a dangerous man. Are you implying that he he's, he's going around hooking people? Uh, hey, if, if he wanted you to be hooked, you'd be hooked. I'd be hooked, but look, I'm not. Look, it's not my business where where and where he isn't hooking. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, I wouldn't want to endeavor into that line of questioning any further. But uh, Hubris is tagged back in, and uh, what do you make of the decision to isolate Kevin Thorne, the larger man on the other team? I think it's a brilliant decision. I mentioned before we hadn't had an opportunity to see them 
in action as a team, you see the teamwork. But now we're getting that as Mosh is getting in here, has no business being there. Get him the other side. Thank you, Shark Boy. Always liked you. This is what you have to do. You take out the big gun. You take out the, the, the heavy, if you will, from the team, right? And take him out. And now it's easy pick. Spoken to Matthew Taylor at any point. Have you, have you had a chance to, to listen to him weave his words and capture you in his web? Oh, absolutely. Why not? He's got that book. He's got some great points. He's got that book, The Gospel of the Light that he uses to, to try to gain his followers and grow his flock. But to me, there's some very sinister intentions here. This is a false prophet. Well, of course to you. Of he's, course you feel that way. He's a false prophet. Wait a minute. What, what am I looking at? Is that a beanie baby? <laughs> if it is, I want to know its value on the secondary market. Is that a skunk? That is a skunk. Matthew Taylor just got Pepe Le Pew'd. And in search of a tag, and he has found salvation in the form of Haley Shadows. And here comes Heather Owens. And Heather Owens has a stiff shot for everybody. Look out. All right, this is going to be a, a four on one. Heather Owens would have a real shot. Nick Breaker connects on Shadows. Owens. Oh, there's an interruption. Owens has the business in her blood. She tried to retire, but couldn't stay away. She thinks she lives, she breathes it, and she fights it. And speaking of fights, we got a fight in every corner of the building. Hubris and Thrasher in the ring. Wild spin. Oh. ducked, and Owens a stunner. Shark Boy says that looks familiar. And that'll do it. Well, Matthew Taylor turned out to be full of empty promises. Headbangers, Kevin, oh, wait a minute. Matthew Taylor preaching the book. I think Shark Boy violated one of Taylor's commandments. Well, I mean, maybe Shark Boy violated a lot of commandments. At least his parents did. That's how you end up with a Shark Boy. Oh, Taylor disrespecting. Oh, Shark Bite! Oh. A stunner again, and a side of the skull. Where did that come from? That's that's Kevin Thorne's real estate banner. Oh my God! And some Look, it's a tough market. You got to do whatever you got to do, I guess. Some some shameless uh, product placement. If you're interested in getting in the housing market, call up Kevin Thorne. Do not call up Matthew Taylor. He has selfish intentions. Well, I got, there's a fan just sat down next to me. I don't know what's happening over here. That is not a fan. We can fan. get security wait, wait involved minute, wait in what? I'm actually here to do a job. All right, well, uh, I have a job get in the here. ring and lay down, I guess. No, That's, no, 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 not that kind of job. Excuse me, sir. I'm here to represent women's wrestling here at the Squared Circle Expo 4. Okay. Did you not four? No, I, nobody ta no one tells me anything. All I know is that we're supposed to have Matt Cardona in the main event tonight. Oh, He's our champion. About no, Cardona. I'm just saying, nobody's telling me anything. we got a lot to talk about tonight. How about the TNA Digital Media Championship? That's still ahead. Crazy scene to defend against Lord Crew. That's going to be heavy hitting to be sure. And how about the Triple Threat Tag Team matchup? The new, new Rockers, the Soul Shooters. They've got Heath Slater and Rhino on their mind. But coming up, Val Capone, we have the women's champion of state. I'm so excited as we have the premier wrestling women's championship coming up for you next. Couldn't be happier. We're going to see Ari Alexander take on the current champion, Steph Delander. We are, except, you know, Steph and I had a conversation in the back after what happened with Matt Cardona last night after the screw job that occurred. I hope she's I, doing better than you are. Oh, no, she's just as angry about it as I am. And so, I mean, we're, we've discuss some things, so she's going to come on out here. Let's look to the future, like um, yes. said I'm not, well, I it's, think it's perhaps we should move on. Oh, again. don't you come in here with your opinions. Oh, it's bad enough I got him over stars here. Stars forbid a woman have an opinion about wrestling. Oh, no, this is, I'm not talking about anything. We don't care about stars. I want to hear all of Val's opinions as we head back to the ring. Sorry, I'm just, it's a lot, it's a lot. 
My family's gone through a lot lately. You need to breathe? You need to take a break? I mean, by all means, take a break. Uh, I know Ari Alexander has had a lot of success in the Midwest. She has built up her name uh, gradually over the months and certainly a formidable competitor who has earned this opportunity, right? I am so excited to watch Double A in the ring, the queen of the German suplex. I cannot wait to see the damage that she hopes to inflict upon SDL. Oh, you're going to be very disappointed. You're going to be very disappointed when you see what SDL is going to do. Oh my. She's not the premier wrestling women's champion for nothing. Josh, that's why She's not the women's internet champion for nothing. That's why we have these matches so we can find out for ourselves. Oh, I just already know. I guess I'd spoiler. You wouldn't have called the spoiler last night with Cardona and Nemeth, would you? Can we not? Why do you keep bringing that up? No, that's, we're living in the past again. Wait. Wait a minute. That's right. Wait. Yep. You know. Well, Steph DeLander. Bow down to the queen. Sir, I mean, bow down, Joe. Knows how to control a room and command a presence. The mood changes with Steph DeLander, and all eyes are on her to perhaps rebound. Now, she is the deathmatch queen, that is for certain, but I'm noticing that title around her waist, that is the that, Women's Internet Championship. Yes, it that is. is. Not the Premier Wrestling Women's Championship. No, it's not. Very astute. Oh, there's a queen in the ring, but it's not Ari Alexander. Bow down. Bow down to her. I, I do not Nope, need to quiet now. She's speaking. Don't you respect women? Let her speak. Women's champion. The premier wrestling champion. Women's champion. days, I will be the TNA Knockouts World Champion. And I was supposed to defend my Premier Streaming Network Women's Championship tonight. But last night, Matt Cardona, my tag partner, he put his title on the line. And we all know how that went. So I've learned my lesson. There is no way in hell that I am putting my Premier Streaming Network Championship on the line tonight. She's not putting the Premier Wrestling Championship on the line either. This is not fair what? to Ari. This is not what Ari signed in up fact, for. Oh well. What? I've heard the right to say that. Already. I've already got my money. It's been a long ass weekend. I've dealt with way too many of you guys. So I might just do what Matt Cardona did. I'm gonna take my ball and I'm gonna go home. See you never. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Good. No, 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 it makes sense. But Steph, we... It's sour grapes. It's not sour grapes. Somebody understands, why do you go? Would you go to a promotion if they screwed you over and would you just come back, if they screw your best friend over and then you come back the next night? And they didn't screw her over, she already got paid. That seems like a sweet deal. Well, it's about more than money, you know? I mean, I saw her line, she had tons of fans waiting hey, to hey, her. Hey.
your chances of walking out with gold around your waist. Great move by Ari Alexander, getting the action back into the ring where it belongs. Ari with a nice running uppercut into SDL. SDL taking a tumble to the center of the ring. Coupling with the offense, I like that. Trying to string together the momentum, but a quick kick out by Delaney. I don't think that Delander was expecting this at all. Delander does have quite a bit of size on Alexander, but Alexander is a second generation wrestler. I know that she definitely learned a thing or two about a thing or three from her dad, Vladimir Alexander. Right to your point, foul. it seemed like Steph Delander wasn't expecting a match at all out here. You gotta wonder if she's warmed up. You gotta wonder if she got her stretches in. Maybe uh, she was expecting to hit the airport. Well, I think she was. Look, the bottom line is, Steph Delander knew what was going on. She's keeping her eyes, she's got eyes in the back of her head right now. I mean, and I she has me looking out for it too. Yeah, she keeps looking at us with a death glare saying, well, I'm not here for this. No, she's not, so she's gonna end this early. That's it, no. no. I consider Steph Delander the only one in her camp with the, the courage. There you go, give up. her the microphone. Hey, Slick Rick, give her the microphone. This is Oh, so she, no, she time? was just trying to say something nice to the fans, yeah. something encouraging to, to Aria Alexander here, but the referee got involved. It's a foreign object, and no one trusts Steph Land. Well, and the fans First were one. getting behind Ari Alexander. Nice chance for Ari. Oh. Just because she's from Australia doesn't mean she's a foreign object. Okay, this oh, is a stop it. You show some respect. I believe our... Partner in crime over here, Joe, is referring to the microphone. You should be accustomed to what microphones look like. First of all, they're not pronounced microphone. They're pronounced microphones. Okay, I'm very familiar with them. I make a living off of them. Hey, let's talk I also have one attached to my headset. How about you? The, yeah, unfortunately, that's true. But right now, we have Steph Delander with a pin lock as she attaches herself to Alexander. Look at the out of that power, uh, that, that, that grip of Steph Delander. But uh, you see that Delander has so much power, it only takes one shot to shut down Ari Alexander's Ari Alexander trying to climb away from Delander, but Delander demanding the momentum return to the center of the ring. She's not, listen, she's not here for a night off. Maybe she was trying to, to leave before a, another screw job happened, but now she's in this. What screw job are you talking about? What's her, Delander was trying to embarrass Alexander by pie-facing her, and that lit a fire under the queen of the suplex as she fires off the coastline, follow through a Not taking time. it down. Come on, Steph. Did you ask...
doesn't. Oh, this referee. Oh, that's all right. Push to the official. No respect for anybody or anything. I don't respect that official. That official allowed her to be DDT'd on a championship. I don't respect that shot. I'm sorry, what happened? This guy was standing in my way. I couldn't see. Stop it. Come on now. What happened? Oh! No! Clean pin and victory! We watching the same battle? The Lander is still the champion. You can question the means of how, and no one's clapping louder or bolder than Mrs. Sternoff to my right. Well, I'm very proud of Steph the Lander in the midst of everything. And look at this. Wow, look at that shot. We are live at the Wyndham West Indianapolis, Indiana. It keeps growing each and every year. It's Fair Turtle Expo 4. What a beautiful shot that is. And what a pack out it is. Nice try. Inside. And there's so much more still to come here in the broadcast. NWA World Championship will be decided. EC3 defending against Carson and Drake. Also, the Spurs Turtle Expo Women's Championship. John Reed. Pray of the Slayer, that ultimate dragon, Nick Nemeth, and Square Circle Expo Men's Championship. It's all coming your way. Are you ready to head back? To oh, we're getting ready. Okay? I'm fine. I'm good now. All, all is right with the world stuff. The land. I'm in a good mood now. God, I didn't know. Take a break from him. I'll see you guys later. I didn't know she was still here. Go, get out of, get out of here. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your contributions. I don't know if Val appreciates you in the same. That's fine. Because coming up next, we have Jack Vaughn versus Tony Gunn. Number one contenders match for the OVW Championship. Right the order of the next match is to determine who is the number one contender for the OVW Heavyweight Championship. OVW Chan bringing out here. Yeah, they've got a, a lot of momentum. Netflix to Louisville there and Netflix in between. Talk about throwback, you want to talk about old school, rugged, hard nosed, the way it was is the way it ought to be, brother, brother, brother. That is Jack Vaughn personified. The veteran is here to hold court. He reminds you back in your day when you were a kid growing up watching in the 60s, early 70s, this is exactly what a professional wrestler looked like. A former three time OVW champion. Well, the OVW championship has changed hands recently. Luke Curtis certified. Luke Curtis is your new champion, and he is there right now defending his championship in an OVW live event. And these two right here are going, both former champions, are here to compete for the number one contender spot. Well, Tony Gunner up and tumble brawler. He is somebody who has calls himself the Arkansas Roughneck. And certainly lives up to that name and so much more. He is a four-time OBW champion, three-time tag team champion, and the most recent former champion as well. He actually defeated Jack Vaughn for that championship before being defeated himself by Luke Curtis, the OVW title in turmoil these past couple weeks, which necessitated I wouldn't say turmoil. Luke Curtis is your champion. Yeah. Luke Curtis should have been champion a long time ago. I'm just saying the parameters of this matchup have been Jack Vaughn has quite a passionate social media following as Jack Vaughn pokes a bit of fun, maybe at the expense of some of the wrestlers of the day. Well, he's just telling it like it is. 
tells it like he sees it through his eyes, and that can be very polarizing these days. You've seen with many podcasters and public speakers. Uh, they're very outspoken and opinionated one way or the other. I gotta give these people what they came to see. Look, I'm not the kind of guy to be outspoken or opinionated. I like to just, you know, go get along, go along. But what? What's happening right here? Oh. Jack Vaughn was like a uh, man slap a leg. Come on. He was gonna do his calling card, the thigh slap. I think Tony Gunn's telling Vaughn, I don't do that stuff. I just get here and fight. And he does and takes down the larger Vaughn. Vaughn's got to be what, six five or so? Maybe bigger. Right. And as we mentioned, the crowd is firmly behind the thigh slap. You want that? There's another show you can turn on if you want to watch a bunch of that. Both men circle one another. Number one contendership for the OVW Championship between these two men, Josh. Seven OVW heavyweight titles between them. Wow. History of these men. I, I don't think Tony Gunn looks at himself the same way as a veteran. Jack Vaughn is himself, but certainly as tough as they come, can stand up to anybody. Ropes right here. Look at this. A lot of speed as well. Hard takedown by Vaughn. Vaughn's ring attire, of course, paying homage to the late great Macho Man Randy Savage. Drop down to trip off gun, but both men leapfrogging one another, trying to outsmart the other. Oh, oh no. no. That's unfortunate. Come on. You got to know you'd run out of ring eventually. And again, that's what Jack Vaughn does. He likes to make you feel foolish, make you look silly, and. Again, the, the last real pro wrestler. Vaughn knows all the tricks. Oh, the yeah, there you go. Oh. Got the shoulder into the midsection. We're going to quicken the pace. Here we go. Duck to the close line. Back elbow as well. And good. Shoots up the ropes with ferocity. The crossbody connects. I don't know why. And why would the crowd boo that? Why would they boo that? Because what has he done wrong? I, first of all, I don't play favorites. Oh Never God. in my life. No, not you. Look, he can slap a thigh. Cheer him. Tony Gunn, he's, he's slapping a thigh. Uh, Tony Gunn. These guys are not uh, the aerial artists that maybe we'll see elsewhere. Oh, he could if he wanted card. to. It's just there's no need for it. That's not how they got There's a multi-time OVW champions oh, yeah. here. Well, that's Both the, of them. That's true. It's not how they got their combined seven title reigns. That's not how Tony Gunn got his reign most recently. But he just lost this past Thursday. As now, here, oh, here you see, again, another fade of the dive by Jack Vaughn. Now, oh, what a shot. Josh, do you think the current champion, Luke Curtis, assuming he's successful in his defense tonight, has a preference on who he'd like to face? I don't think Luke Curtis cares. I don't think certified Luke Curtis cares one way or the other. Right now, he's the champion. He's representing OVW. That's what matters. He looks at both of these. You know what he looks at? He looks at one guy that he beat and another guy that the guy that he beat beat. So what does he care? Either of them can come in there against Luke Curtis. And one of these men's going to. And Luke Curtis is going to... He's going to continue his reign. Long time coming, that reign. Could be a confident mindset, or could be inadvertent self-sabotage. You don't want to overlook any challengers, as Jack Vaughn, with the wrist control, has Tony Gunn in his clutches. All right. Gunn, there you see a, a gun salute of another sort, as Vaughn slows him up side suplex. Hooks the leg. He didn't do no problem with that size. Oh, uh, listen, he, he's an old school guy. He looks at the best. The legends. Oh, no! Oh. Tony Gunn dipped into a different playbook. Lowers that rope and 
Oh, no amount of tape study will prepare you for the landing Jack Vaughn just to do it. Well, I mean, there's some tapes, but... Vaughn the fast way in all seriousness being coached on that bottom row. And this may be where Tony Gunn begins to go to work. Grabbing Vaughn. Trying to battle out. Is Tony Gunn uh, not 100%. You see that ear is bandaged, cauliflowered. I believe it was damaged by uh, the real one, the former Enzo, recently on OVW television. There you see it. the cover. And the chin lock cinched in immediately by Tony Gunn. And certainly, you think about somebody like real one, like Enzo, uh, the boxing background, the sparring sessions he gets on. He's a very, very dangerous man. So, well, Tony yeah. Gunn to be standing, that's, that's not going to No, and that's the type of action that you're going to see on OVW Rise. But look, Tony Gunn in here now, he's not going to let a little cauliflower here stop him. This is an opportunity to get back his OVW championship. I don't think he's going to be able to do that. I think he has a good chance of being victorious tonight, but then he's got to face certified Luke Curtis, and I just don't see a victory in, in his future. But I look see at that a knee. High knee in Jack Vaughn's future. Because it's past now. Hit him in the jaw, two count only. Uh, how do you keep frustration. on your one There's frustration right now in Tony Gunn. And that, uh, look, use it. Use that frustration, Joe, right? You cannot allow it to use you. You can't let Jack Vaughn, whether it be the mind games or resiliency, rent space in your head. That's what Jack Vaughn counts on. Well, no, he never pays rent. Well, Tony Gunn is somebody that can be very impulsive, very reactionary. He doesn't necessarily have a... a Disciplined skill set. He knows fighting, and he's very proficient at fighting. Jack Vaughn's not staying there. Tony Gunn put the boots to him in the corner there. That's what said. Jack Vaughn right into the other corner. Oh, full steam. Picked him up to knock him back down. Hooks the leg. Smart maneuver to keep the big man, Jack Vaughn, off his feet at all costs. Now there is a height advantage. Jack Vaughn, except for when he's lying down, shoulders on the mat. And that's what Tony Gunn is doing. Tony Gunn is taking this opportunity right now to take control. Well, right now he's discussing things with this referee. Listen, I agree with you. This referee is an imbecile. But you can, well, I tell it like it is. What gives you, you can't the right to say that? Well, Jack Vaughn glazed over look at his eyes right now. He may not all be all there. Wait, up and over. Vaughn's instincts are kicking in. Yeah, but he got caught up. He slipped on that rope a little bit. Oh, come on, ref. He got the Roman Ipo. And Vaughn the double sledge. Shades of the man. That gear is inspired by, and now the point of the elbow between the eyes of Tony Gunn, courtesy of the veteran Jack Vaughn on Atomic Drop. How long has it been since we've seen that on television? And now a slam. Oh, he's warming up that thigh. A little strut taking too much time with Tony Gunn. Oh, he's about to move. He was about to move. Jack Vaughn bringing the sizzle and bringing the steak. Oh, it's better than the steak in this restaurant in the hotel. Wild swing with a duck, and Gunn is trying to drop down with a Fujiwara armbar. Oh, and he's got perfect positioning. This can separate his shoulder, it can hyperextend an elbow. Yeah, but that, that height advantage we talked about came into play. You know, Tony Gunn is looking at the ring. His ring awareness is based on his own height. And he's not thinking about the height of his opponent, Jack Vaughn, who's able to use those legs, those long legs, to break up that move. Look at this. That's an excellent point. I don't think Gunn is used to being in the ring. How can he be used to being in the ring with somebody the size of Jack Vaughn? There aren't many like him. Oh! Talk about cauliflower ear. And it could be time for Tony Gunn 
to hit the kill shot. This will do it. And Thor oh. counters the spinebuster. It's Arn Anderson. Will that be all? No. I bet Double A would be proud of that one. I'll text him. It wasn't quite three, but it did its damage. Anderson does it. Like that. Uh, why would you say such a thing? I don't think Arn Anderson would like Matt Cardona. Here comes Jack Vaughn, fireman's carry. All the airplanes spin. Is Mike Rotunda still here somewhere? Big boot steps out of the way. He made himself a little dizzy. And drops down all the way on top of Vaughn. Is that on the hoe, dear Vaughn? Frustration setting in. Tony Gunn. Like I said before, use that frustration. Don't yeah. allow it to take advantage of you. Scowl of the referee. Oh, 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 oh my no, God. No, 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 no. That's scary power. Oh, back into the corner goes Vaughn. Another kill shot attempt. And another oh, boom. Oh, oh. Jack Vaughn hooks the leg. Oh. Josh, if this is not exemplary of what the OVW title means to both these men, I don't know what is. Well, I have it on good authority. Luke Curtis right now, he's in the, the Square Circle Expo arena on the new Premier Wrestling app, and he is watching this. He's backstage at OVW right now watching this match with bated breath. He's waiting to see because he's impressed. He's impressed by both of these men. He's got to know that this could be the end of his title reign if one of these men have their way. Gun the high knee again and got a seven oh. kill shot, but not enough because Vaughn back with a kaiju lariat to beat him. Jack Vaughn could be a short time away from OVW title reign number four, but there is a certified champion standing in his way in the name of Luke Curtis. What are his odds? His odds aren't good, Joe. I'm going to tell you that right now. His odds aren't good. But I will say, Jack Vaughn's odds are as good as they're Let him do it. No, oh, he did it no, again. I, see, he did it. I wish I would have had an opportunity to talk over that, please. Are his odds better now than he slapped the five? No. No? No, as a matter of fact, no. Now all that's going to do is just that's going to lock up that, that quadricep muscle. So you want to do it more? No. Oh. Stop. Put your thigh away. Well, My God. Jack Vaughn will be competing for the OBW title. Stay tuned for more news on that and OBW social channels. But what a night it's been here at Hertz and Mexico, our parade of champions. Such an eventful weekend. I hear every year it grows and grows and grows. My first chance experience in live. And Josh, I know you're here each and every year. And seeing it expand the way it is, it's got to make somebody even like you proud. It does. It does make me proud. It makes me proud to be a part of Squared Circle Expo. This is my second year here. I'm proud to be a, a part of Premier Wrestling that is a part of Squared Circle Expo. You, you know, Premier Wrestling only tag teams with the best, and that's Squared Circle Expo. And I gotta tell you one other thing, it's a nice pleasure. Last year, I had that giant thumb, AJ McKay, sitting next to me. Now I got you. What happened to that guy? It, it's the, it's the, the slightest of upgrades, but I'll take it. That is a hell of a compliment. But up and coming up, Crazy Steve defends the TNA Digital Media Championship against Lord Crew. This thing will be intense. I can't wait. Let's go to the ring and get things underway. Go. So. Uh, referee falling his way out to the ring. It's a hectic night. Moving parts everywhere. And this man can move mountains. Merciless Lord Crew. A year ago, Ace Austin felt the wrath of this man. Tonight, another potential. That poor, that poor kid, he's trying. He just couldn't reach him. Impact Wrestling TNA victim but a champion at that. 
having a good time now, but when the bell rang, Lord Drew has no laughing matter. Did you say he was a victim of TNA wrestling? I did not say that. You said TNA wrestling victim. I said his next TNA wrestling victim oh. would be tonight after Ace Austin. I'm going to say, I hear it's a wonderful place to work, but all right. Just get that shovel out, why don't you? No, I wouldn't bury you. Lord Crew, look at the size of this guy. Look at the development. That is a big man right there. You're looking at possibly the next digital media champion. But first we've got the current digital media champion, the TNA digital media champion. About to make his way out here, or he was, and he is now. Oh boy. Certainly an intimidating, daunting presence. A man who defeated Tommy Dreamer back at TNA Hard to Kill at the beginning of January, and since then has claimed victims ranging from the man beast Rhino to Joe Hendry to Laredo Kid. How do you defend against something you can't figure out? That's the enigma that is Crazy Steve. Crazy Steve, man, I'm gonna tell you something. Having gold around his waist is something I think people should get used to. Because if it's not this championship, it'll just be another one. Crazy Steve, he is, like you said, you can't you can't prepare for a guy like Crazy Steve. You just can't. Send it up to our uh, ring announcer. And it is for the TNA Digital Media Championship. Introducing first the challenger from Cincinnati, Ohio, Merciless Lord And weighing five bags of feed from the Black Hills Sanitarium, he is the TA Digital Media Champion, Crazy Steve! And not just mentally unpredictable, physically put together as well. Crazy Steve is dangerous, mind, body, and soul. We're going to see the five of TNA Digital Media Championship. You, I'm sorry, is this crowd chanting bite his face off? Sometimes you get a little bloodthirsty when you did, you know, indoors all weekend, I, around wrestling. You can your blood. Why? He's bloodthirsty. First of all, volunteering other faces for consideration. Well, why wouldn't you? Bite that guy's face up right there. Who's to say Crazy Steve's only going to stop at once? I'm getting out of here. My face is my money maker. That's what you want to believe. We are live across the world. Premier Wrestling at Indianapolis, Indiana. It's very certain Expo for Parade of Champions. And so great to see so many promotions represented under one room, one card, one night. And it's really uh, like a pro wrestling all-star game. It really is. I mean, this is called Parade of Champions for a reason. And right now we have the TNA digital media title on the line. I mean, you're talking about the Premier Championship, the TNA Championship, Squared Circle Expo Championships, NWA, New Japan Pro Wrestling. This is, this is you're exactly right. And I almost never agree with you. This is, this is stacked. Let's just write it down. It may not happen again. Lord Crew, I think it's a little intimidated. He's thrown off his game by the uh, face-fighting requests, let's say. Wouldn't you be? Yes. But you have to know that going in, signing this matchup. Crazy Steve is not going to demonstrate his 10 favorite wrist locks. He's going to try to hurt you. But this is wrestling. There's got to be some rules. There have to be. Otherwise, he didn't break any rules. Or crew goes down to the midsection. Who's got that size advantage, though? Make no mistake about that. Oh, look at the speed. Steve needs to build that momentum to get back to a dominant position. Wow. wow. Nicely done. No, 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 come on. That face is right there, but no. Bite the ref's face off of anybody, look at him. Most of his face is covered in beard, you won't even notice it's gone. 
That's it. You don't want that. You don't need beard stuck in your teeth. She has that fan if she's ever had her face bit off, obviously, by the looks of her, she has, but. Oh, stop. What? That. I'm just, look. That is rude. What did I. Apologize, right? What did now. I say? Apologize. Oh, no, he's biting him now. He's biting him. Crazy Steve. Taking a big chunk out of what? The wrist, the forearm, another toe. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Off his beard. It's the face, next is the face. He's, well, he's trying. Trying to bite his face, but he... That's a, oh, no. Oh, that was, you, you called it earlier, beard in the teeth. Yeah, you don't want that. Take your word for it. Here comes a spy buster. And you know, you can do a lot of things to play mind games with your opponent, but maybe one thing you don't do is mess with a man's beard when he's taking that long throw with him. Absolutely not. Did you see those four? That was not, it looked like he was going to punch him, but instead he was just forearm right in the back of the head. Yeah, the crew is uh, looking to do some serious damage, and, and to his credit, the forearm more legal than the fist. Body shots in the corner, and notice how one single shot can elevate a man the size of Crazy Steve off his feet. Your Lord Crew does not need to bite people's faces. He's got his own strength. He's got his own skill, and that's that's what Crazy Steve is about to see. And I think we're about to see him champion as well. Well, it could be a big time accomplishment. Imagine how the game changes in TNA. Look, he's biting him again. Is this no disqualification? Well, he's got a five count to stop biting. You know no, saying. that is not. No, you don't have a five count to stop biting. What's next? Oh, you have a five count to stop stabbing him. <laughs> Look out, there's a follow away slam, a stabbing pain into the lower back of Crazy Steve. I guess technically, you have a four count, but then you have to fight. But you know what? Crew's standing, he's too pretty for space bit. Who was that person to sit next to us that one match? What was that all about? Did, did she win a uh, Val Capone? Yeah, did she Al Capone? Val Capone, stop it. So what she win like a, a contest or something to come sit next to us? Is that what happened? Trust me, when she's next to you, she doesn't feel like a winner on any stretch. Well, comparatively, of course not. Well, she glad. can't be so hard on herself. <laughs> I'm glad we agree on that. She did a better job than you? She's our expert women's division analyst. As the crew fires away to the chest cavity of Crazy Steve, and you can't bite anybody when you're flat on your back. Well, that's not entirely true. Well, not when they are standing and at a distance. Okay. Again, no follow-up questions for me. Well, I just know things. You know, I've been around. I've seen things. I, I, I believe you have, trust me. There's a jawbreaker. Well, I've never had to deal with something like that, a jawbreaker from Crazy Steve. Crazy Steve looking to mount a comeback here on the larger Lord Crew. Caught the back elbow. Full force behind it. Left arm clothesline. Oh. Into the buckle multiple times. And Steve, no room for Crew to catch a breath. Got the knee up. I'll oh, check this out. That hanging body scissors. I don't know if that is a choking like effect or what, but the momentum, the leverage using the ropes is illegal. Breaking by five is Crazy Steve, who wow. stars from the top of the crossbody. Got him! Oh, that was an impressive crossbody right there. Steve can wrestle. Absolutely. Which is why he doesn't need to be going around biting people's faces. No, that's just for fun. Oh my god. Crazy Steve measures the Lord challenge. Crew and his crosshairs, but oh! Went for a cannonball. Oh, I think uh, the top of the spine hit that turnbuckle pad so hard. That's and it. Yeah. You're a noggy. Lays waste You're to Crazy noggy. Steve. We have a new chip. No, Crazy Steve kicks out again. Hey, there's a reason Crazy Steve is champion. He didn't just walk in and become champion. He earned it. I might not agree with his biting and whatnot, but 
He's a hell of an athlete, a hell of a competitor. And right now, Lord Crew is focused too much on the crowd. You can't do that. Don't worry about these mouth breathers, these neck beards. But roll up, roll up here. Driving with the legs, two count only. And oh! oh! Discus pump kick. I'm not sure how often I've ever seen that. And a man that size getting that kind of height, that kind of quickness, that's scary. That is scary. Not as scary as what seems about to, uh, to feel. Oh, Crazy Steve holding on to the ropes, though. Crazy Steve fighting for his well-being. No, 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 ref! Ref! He's biting his face off! Oh, my God. He warned him. Oh! DDT! That's Belladonna's kiss! It's a kiss good night. Wow. Crazy Steve is still hungry, still thirsty. He's got the championship in his mouth. But bottom line is, all year, everybody's trying to figure out Crazy Steve and Lord Crew falls short once again. How do you stop this walking riddle that is Crazy Steve? I don't think you do, but speaking of riddles, early later on tonight, we have Matt Riddle defending the New Japan Pro Wrestling World Television Championship against Jake Oman. That's coming up. What else do we have coming up here as Crazy Steve shows off to these bloodthirsty fans, well, these I, mouth breathers? I love the chip to implement oh, up and down the card. Triple threat tag team titles at stake. Heat and Rhino, the soul shooters. And how about the new, new rockers, the newest rockers the new, are here new, tonight. New, 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 new rockers. That's what you got, Al Snow. And where is it Leaf Cassidy tonight? Who is it going to be? I'm not, I think that's up to Al slash Leaf. Al Snow is going to be here tonight, and no matter what he is, and of course, Cal Hero as well, the, you know, riding Al's coattails. But look, it's, well, I'm just saying it how it is. Rocking and rolling, strutting and strolling, slamming and jamming. They could be the new tag team champions in 2024. We got something going on right now. I think we're going to head back to the ring in a minute. Oh, it's just a referee. Look, here we go. I'm just directing traffic. Did that referee just get his own entrance music? Well, is that what happened here? I couldn't get my own entrance music when I came out here. I had to come out here with this guy. You're flustering everybody in the truck. Stop complaining to everybody and just let things unfold as they may. All right, enough now. We have the Soul Shooters making their way to the ring. That's Soul, and then in the back there, that's Shooter. I see. Well, these are a veteran tag team duo, Apollo Star and Drew Skills. We've seen them a number of times before here at uh, Square Circle Expo. And sometimes they're on the upper hand, sometimes not so much, but their eyes are always on those tag team titles. Absolutely, they're on the tag team titles. But man, they've got to go against Cal Hero. You know, I poked a little fun earlier, but Cal Hero has just grown by leaps and bounds in his abilities in the ring. And he's in there. He's learning every single night from Al Snow. Soul Here we go. Soul Shooters have met Cal Hero in the past. Cal and Shark Boy back at the inaugural Squared Circle Expo. But the new, new Rockers. The newest Rockers, if yes. you will. They are here. Al Snow and Cal Hero, the Fanny Pack Kid. So now Fanny Pack's fitted perfectly with the Rockers. Al Snow, there's nobody in this business better to sit under their learning tree than Al Snow. And Cal Hero has a front row seat to, to that learning opportunity. I'm mixing my, uh, my analogies, but just don't ask Al or Lee how to dance. Would not What's wrong with that. his dancing? It's um, embarrassing. Oh, baby. Listen to the ovation for Heath and Rhino. They are the reigning tag team champions of Squared Circle Expo. I was going to say Al Snow looks absolutely incredible. 
But then here comes Rhino, who I saw in the back drinking from his uh, fountain of youth. Rhino looks as good, if not better, than he's ever looked in his entire career. How is this possible, Joe? Rhino looks like you've aged 10 years since we sat down here. There's a reason Rhino for that. Rhino is incredible. Rhino decided to stop aging 20 years ago, and Father Time's too intimidated to tell him that he can't. That sounds that sounds fair to me. That sounds legit. Ethan, and of course, Heath. Heath and Rhino defeating Fuego del Sol and Shark Boy to be the inaugural tag team champions some time ago, and have had a stranglehold on them since. And he needs that title. He's got kids. Now why? why? No, tell me, honestly, why? Just because they don't bring back this great feeling of nostalgia? time tag team champions all over the place, including the WWE. Yeah, and they're all trying, he's got kids. How old are these kids now? Kick them out already. No matter how old they are, they're still children. Yeah, but they should go get a job at this point. Well, it's been years. Maybe he keeps having kids. Maybe it's a pastime. Well, I mean, look at them. Well, Al Snow's uh, spiritual guidance head is not in attendance, I believe. It's a way to not have kids. Al Snow is, I think he's leaving. Al Snow has finally, finally turned his back on Cal Hero. He did not No, get Cal Hero's been riding his coattails for so long that Al Snow finally said it's enough. It's enough with, oh no. Oh, they're here. It's head! Wow. Maybe this is the missing piece of the puzzle that will bring the new, new, newest, most new rockers into championship gold. He can't believe he saw him. Soul shooters over there, they don't want any of that. So, is Head one of the Rockers now, too? I think, I guess Head's kind of like an unofficial manager of the Rockers. Okay. Well, we'll see if it uh, pays dividends. The Soul Shooters are not abused. Why should they be? They're looking at this, they want tag team gold. This is great, good for everybody. The crowd loves Head, wonderful. Al Snow, one of the best of all time, one of the greatest of all time, greatest minds in wrestling, even if he's lost it, and he carries around a mannequin head that he thinks is talking to him, but he still has one of the greatest minds in this business, that should tell you something. But the soldiers, they are here to become Squared Circle Expo Tag Team Champions. It's enough with this already, they don't want this. They wanna get in there, they're here to fight, look at them. Josh, just because they don't talk to you doesn't mean they don't talk to Al in Al's own mind. Oh, I believe they talk to Al in his own mind. He's counting down for that for her head there. I don't know. Al is, is helping the referee assert the authority to make sure the illegal... He's teaching the referee how to count to three. The illegal head is on the outside. Well, that did not last long. Head's in a rambunctious mood tonight. Oh, well, we got a fanny pack and yeah, head. 
They're hanging out in the corner over there. Josh, head. you look great in a fanny pack. I'd want all like glittery and sparkly like the rest of your ensemble. Well, of course I would, but I don't need to do that. I have people who hold my belongings for me. Oh, excuse me. Well, maybe Cal Hero doesn't want to treat people like that. Maybe he doesn't look at people as beneath. He hasn't earned that yet. Well, One day. Maybe Cal will earn the tag team titles. Al, Snow, and Heath. Nose hey. to nose. Hey, uh. Al in control of Heath Slater, of course. Al Snow, one of the central figures of Netflix's series, The Wrestlers, spotlighting OBW. Available uh, across the world right now. Received such critical acclaim. And not just critical acclaim, but also uh, has led to a resurgence and a groundswell of OBW popularity, selling out crowds throughout their tours. And Al Snow at the helm, steering the ship, back elbow. Some might say that it that OVW's wrestlers taught Netflix how successful it can be to have pro wrestling on your network. One would suggest that could be true. And Cal what an incredible, what an incredible show that was. And that really what that told you was that gave you a, a taste of Al Snow's wisdom and what he teaches kids like a Cal Hero. Cal but Hero none of what he teaches them is going to prepare him for a veteran like, like Heath. Well, Cal Hero is so fortunate to have someone like Al Snow to turn to deep arm drag nicely done. Well, all right. I'm about as surprised as Heath is. What do you have against Cal? I have nothing against Cal. I have been singing his praises for years and years and years. And I don't even mind the fact that he's riding Al Snow's coattails. That's fine. Again, you see no, it's fine. It's, no, listen. I think he is a hell of a talent. He's a great young kid. But he walks around with his fanny pack. He worries too much about these these kids. I look at I look at Cal Hero and I see potential. I see the I see a future world champion. I just want him to get his head on straight. And I'm not talking about them over there on the, on the under the turnbuckle pad. I'm talking about Al Snow. Get, er, I'm talking about Cal Hero getting his head on straight, focusing on his career. I would suggest instead of having a good top fanny pack party all the time. I would suggest for somebody in his early 20s, as Cal Hero still is. He's remarkably poised. He's remarkably of sound mind and comfortable. And oh, not in control. Well, he's not moment. comfortable now. Not at all. The inverted atomic drop from Heath. He's got kids. I don't know the cow's ever going to. No Grandpa David Hero anytime soon. Sorry. There's a tag to the man beast, the War Machine Rhino. It's a shame because he already looks the part. Double back elbow. Uh, Rhino, certainly an extreme original, but world champion in CNA as well. You talked about, you documented his world tag team championship history as well. It's so unlikely, certainly at the time, but still today. You look on the surface, Rhino, Heath, what do they have in common? A West Virginia rural boy and a guy from the mean streets of Detroit, Michigan. But something about them just gels. Hey, opposites attract, right? These two... They have formed, I don't think anybody, when they first got put together, looked at this and said, this is a long-term team. This is going to work. And they just, they have. They've worked. And now, but now, look at this. A couple of extreme originals. ECW chant. I don't want to let these guys down, but another ECW original, Matt Cardona, is not here tonight. ECW original? Th absolutely. Oh, don't, don't give me that sci-fi stuff. We'll be debating here all night. Here's a tag. Now I'm from Philadelphia. I know ECW. To Apollo Star. I hope you did. Apollo Star knows tag team competition. He's been doing it 20 years. Trained by American kickboxer back uh, 2001. And somebody who each and every year puts his target on those tag titles. Al Snow, the overhead throw. Keep in mind how proficient Al Snow is at various fighting styles. He was even a corner man at one point for Dan to be severed in an early UFC pay-per-view. He was. He's, he, I mean, one of the most prolific trainers as well, taking another way from his career, his in-ring career, which obviously is still going. Al Snow looks possibly bigger than he's ever looked. Best shape of his entire life right now. Drew's, but think of the people he's trained. That Drew Skills got the knee in on the blind side of Al Snow and now choking Apollo Star 
from behind. The Soul Shooters contended for the tag titles in another three-way matchup a year ago. They were unsuccessful. They've had 365 some odd days to think about it, and they do not want to let it slip through their fingers again. Tonight's their night. Look at them, they can't, they're not here to play around. Drew Skills, trained by somebody I know very well, Les Thatcher and Cody Hawk, Heartland Wrestling Association, when they were a developmental territory, when they were only taking the best. That's when Drew Skills broke in, and he's still going strong today. Al Snow in a bad way. Al he's Snow is trying down. to get over to Cal Hero. And keep in mind, Josh, if Drew Skills can pin Al Snow, that would mean Rhino and Heath lose the titles. There's an OVW chant, OVF and W is the sign over there. Al Snow, mouthing off to skills right there. And you know Al Snow can talk trash, he's got an attitude. And slides through, comes back with a close line. Here comes the Fanny Pack Kid. Uh, now Hero say. brings that youthful exuberance into action. And all reversal by Skills, Calva drop kick. This kid's got all the tools. He's fundamentally sound. He believes in himself. He's listening to the right people. A huge upside, and Cal Hero could have hit a new crescendo tonight. Cal Hero, absolutely. You know, we didn't see as much of Cal as, as I think I, I would have liked to have in the uh, wrestlers' documentary. But Cal Hero, while that was going on, was making a true name for himself. I asked Cal one time his earliest memory of being in a ring. I think mean, he told me a story about when cover two and no, about being about five years old and doing the work with Scotty Tuhati. I mean, this man has been in and around the sport his entire life, born to do this, many would say, and he's been surrounded by these veterans his whole life. You can't help but learn that way. No, absolutely not. He, look, he is, right now, he's not in a great, a great way. He's being taught a lesson because you can be surrounded by as many veterans as possible, but you don't, you don't just become a veteran yourself just because you're surrounding yourself with them. And Heath took an awkward spill to the outside as well. To that point, Josh, you're right. It's about being smart enough to learn to absorb that knowledge. I think Cal's done it, and he knows he needs his mentor now, Al Snow. He does. But Poison Apollo Star looking to cut him off the pass. Inching. He's inches away. Cal Hero, can he make the tag to Snow? Al is with every fiber in his being and Calvin and Zaguri. But was that the last Cal Hero had in the system? That may have been it. That may have been all he had left. Cal Hero is... Here comes Al Snow. Down goes the Soul Shooters. And the dynamic changes with the Squared Circle Expo tag titles at stake. We've only had one set of champions, and it could be moments till Al Snow changes it. Snowplow! That That's the snowplow! Al's done it! No. Two skills intervenes. Here comes Heath. And there goes Skills. Rhino pulling Cal Hero to the outside here. And this what thing up? has broken down. There's fights everywhere. He and Snow reversal by the snowman. Oh. To the outside again goes he. Apollo Star now. Look, Al going oh, right. slam. Look at that. Oh, what are they doing in their head? Oh, they're getting a head up on the competition. Oh, come on. Drew Skills just Rafferty. got it. Raph, pay attention. Apollo Star feels it as well. Cal Hero crashes down the hook of the leg, and the Rockers have done it. What? Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of this match, a new Squared Circle Expo Tag Team Champions, Al Snow, Cal Hero, the newest Rocker. They didn't even pin the champions. The newest Rockers are the newest champions in Squared Circle Expo. Rhino and Heath, they are not happy. They weren't pinned. They did not lose these championships. Well, those are the rules of a triple threat matchup. It may not be fair. You can argue it all day, but the Rockers did nothing wrong. They got the first pin, and they're leaving, getting out of Dodge. 
for the tag team titles. Two new rockers, new champions. It is 2024 and Al Snow is a champion. That's As a part of the rockers. The what is happening here? That's Where so are we? The mark of a veteran, right? You're but timeless. You can withstand everything. Congratulations to the newest rockers. But I got to tell you, I mean, Heath and Rhino, they are not happy. They are, I mean, they're saying words that I wouldn't repeat. What a run Cal Hero's about to go on, not just with those tag titles, but with his entire career. I can't wait to see it, and I can't wait to see the main event still to come later tonight. Square Circle Expo Championship will be at stake. Nick Nemeth, his first title defense against one of the most decorated champions of all time, Ultimo Dragon, but also good luck calling this one, partner. Prime Championship, Scramble Royal, all bets are off here. Oh, this is gonna be, we got a lot of talent in this one. Yo, Cole Cabana's in there. I was in a battle royal with him once. Yeah, but it, 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 regardless, it doesn't matter. The reality is he's been in this. And now let's get you to the ring and get you set for the Prime Championship. Wow, look at that championship. Kind of buried the lead here. With all the contestants in the ring, the only way to be eliminated is to be thrown over the top rope and down to the floor. Both feet must touch the floor until only two men remain. Then it becomes a regular wrestling match, and the winner of it will be our first ever prime champion. How about that? Well, a new championship tonight. And, it's an and someone's going to earn it. It's an open field. You never know who or what can find themselves at the top of the rankings and who can maybe do away with years of work for the great performance tonight. The mold breaker, 22 years of age. He's got a shot, six foot four. Well, he didn't break the mold. They smashed it when he was born, but never again. Oh, yeah, it's big trouble, Ben Bishop. Whoa, this guy's mammoth. Big time, Savion. And Tom Bobani. Prima Donny. Accompanied by Captain Wellington. Oh my God. The Tim Lutz. Look at it shake, and he's holding the weight too. That is, uh, that's Captain Wellington, and a lot of them. Spider Nate Webb! Teenage bag baby. Oh, listen on to Iron oh. Maiden. That is baby nice. with yes. me. What an wow. awesome. Well, that's no, Matt Diesel. That's Matt Diesel. That's Matt Diesel. A young athlete looking Matt for an opportunity. Diesel. There you go. Now we know who that is. A simple kind of man. Vance Warner, who has not endeared himself to many as of late. He's got to kind of be a favorite. He's got to be a favorite here. Well, there's a guy that you felt the wrath of, a veteran of any match type, Boom Boom Cole Cabana. Straight from Maxwell Street. Entered into the athleisure stage of his career. Sergeant, ready for wartime. Sergeant Ledbetter and uh, who's that? Mr. Rogers? I think it's Charles Nelson Riley. You say so.
Oh, Cabana, quite colorful, to say the least. Look at the size of some of these mammoths in this ring. Look at Ben Bishop compared to a guy like Matt Diesel. Wait a minute here. Sergeant Ledbetter just took a microphone and handed it to... Look at this crowd. We got a bunch of Hoosiers and a bunch of losers. What is this, mid-court mania? Where's our champ gonna be? Right here. I'm just judging based on his appearance, but I don't think he's allowed to be that close to children. Well, looky what we have here. A ring full of victims for Sergeant Ledbetter. You show some respect when a military veteran's out here speaking. We're starting out right here. We got a guy named Tim Lutz. Tim, I like you. Tim Lutz is a world record holder. That's true. It took him 12 hours to beat five jabronis in a matchup. But you know what, Tim? That's better than your normal 30 seconds that you're known for. And that's okay. That's okay. We still love you. I don't know if you guys realize this, but that man right there, that's big time. That's Savion, and he's got his own business cards. Now, what's interesting about these business cards, if you, if you scan this QR code, it actually takes you to Justin Xavier's OnlyFans page, which is really, really weird. But you are a little sexy muscle boy, and that's okay. Big, big time. You've been all over the world, and you just got back from a big tour of Italy, and I'm proud of you for that. You're doing a lot better than Bomani over there, who the last time he did a tour of Italy, he ordered one at Olive Garden, he took another one to go. You know, just to be fair, Cole Cabana's in the ring and Nick Nemeth is in the back if you want That's a comedy. true story, by the way. But Monty, though, I didn't realize that they stacked crap that high until I looked over and saw that big large son bitch right there. And then I realized they can really stack it tall. Get the hook. I'm going to take a nap real quick hey, to wake me up. Look, everybody, done. he's got the coach jersey on. He's representing it's Spider Nate Webb. He is a legend, he's been around forever. And the great thing about Nate Webb is he got clearance tonight from his probation officer. He can be here long enough to get thrown out by Sergeant Ledbetter. So everyone put their hands together for Nate Webb and his probation officer. I just gotta happy about that. Anyone have a pencil I can buy? Jack Lance is somewhere tugging at his tie. How about Prima Donnie? Everybody put their hands together for Prima Donnie. I'm really glad this is not a 60-man battle royal. Prima Donnie is, uh, is a Cincinnati firefighter. Put your hands together for Prima Donnie. This crowd just poo a firefighter? In two years of service, his biggest accomplishment was saving a dead cat from an abandoned treehouse. Thank you for your service, Prima Donnie. Now, we got Cole Yeah, I gotta tell you, Cabana. I'm agreeing with this crowd right now. AEW's own Cole Cabana. Put your hands together for Cole Cabana. Sarge ain't taking the hint. He thinks he's still now, uh, here's a special thing about camp Cole Cabana. The captive audience. I saw him sitting over at his table during his terrible podcast. There was people falling asleep, and he had a line of about three people. Actually, Hornswoggle's son had a longer line at his table than Cole Cabana. And as a matter of fact, I had a longer line at my table just to get my autograph and picture than Cole Cabana. Did he forget there's a match? And how about Mance Warner? 
He's hoping, I think everybody in the ring is about to eliminate themselves. Endless. We've seen him on AEW. He didn't fare very well. He got his ass kicked, but that's okay. We still love him. And I can't talk about what happened at your table because I didn't see your table. Probably because he put someone through it. Saturday night. It ain't 6.05, but ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the legend, Tommy Rich. But I'll tell you one thing, it's not the king of the super station, Wildfire, Tommy Rich. Somebody say something about getting Barred up in Indianapolis. Did you just? I think you just said you knew what year it was. Uh, now I'm tired like to take that back. I don't know. Tommy Rich. They're still talking. Tommy oh Rich, God. who won the NWA World Title from Harley Race, and I believe 1981. And let's all stand at attention for Sergeant. Sergeant Ledbetter. Oh, good. And now the battle all got better. He's out of there. Wildfire. Thank you, Tommy Rich. I love you. And Tommy Rich firing up on everybody. Yes. Tommy Rich is going to be the first prime champion. I can feel it. Oh, at six foot twelve. 15% of a metric ton. Six for 12. That's how Ben Bishop describes it. I'm not telling him any different. Oh, Tommy Rich fighting off from this giant. Oh, what shot. I got, oh. Tommy Rich. Josh, did you see the ease that Tommy Rich was elevated over that top rope? I haven't seen that. Anyone do that to Tommy Rich in decades. Oh, big trouble over here. That doesn't mean he's in big trouble. Uh, big trouble everywhere here because this is one of the most dangerous matches in wrestling. Stray arms and legs. We love you, Tommy. You saved us. You saved us from some surfire. I'm going to say he's, he might be my favorite wrestler of all time yes. after him interrupting that diatribe. Justin Xavier, Pac-Man he calls himself, ultra-competitive gamer, has the Pac-Man record on a number of arcade machines throughout Ohio, but we'll see if has that been, Has that been... Uh, confirmed? Is anybody going to check? Why are you doubting him? He's a kid. He's 22. Why That's would he exactly lie? why I'm doubting him. Boys, I'm in doubting him. He's going to stay on this thing right now. Check out these two hard-nosed brawlers, Manser and Spider Nate Webb. Xavier, Xavier's six foot four. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, Tim Lutz, Tim no, 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 no. No, he's, he's in, no. he's in. Only one foot has touched the ground. Well, how's he gonna get back? Oh, wait a minute, he's got help out there. Oh, Captain Wellington, he put his shake weight down. That's how you know it's serious. Captain Wellington showing, the, look at that. If the strength from that shake weight is what allowed, the, the, the strength that he's gained is what allowed him to do that. Look at that, one foot, one foot. Keep going. Where's he going? He's running. We have an elimination on the outside. He's back. A big time's big eliminated. Time, yeah, big time Savion is out. Prime championship at stake. What's the advantage? What's the strategy in a battle royal like this? Hang on to the rope for dear life. Do you think that, oh, a big man like that, it, it locks out this time? I think Lutz is out this time. I think he's out. That's is, it for Lutz. Is it an advantage? Nope. nope. Oh, no. Wait. Well, we'll let the official figure it out. He's going to ask if it's an advantage being that tall as, as Ben Bishop is. I don't think so. Look at this. Or if it makes you a target. He's a target now. No, you want a low up. center of gravity when you're, in a, when you're in a match like this. Of course, Andre the Giant, the king of the battle royals over the years. But that doesn't mean he's going to be a big man. Andre the Giant. Oh, Justin Xavier's gone. Andre the Giant was more than just height. That could okay. be okay. Yeah, he was. Oh, there goes Spider Nate Webb, courtesy of Colt Cabana, a couple of Midwest legends. Hey, you know what that means. Getting eliminated from Battle World by Colt Cabana means your career's about to take off, pal. Oh, is that what happened? Well, <laughs> Matt Diesel trying to eliminate Manser. I've seen Matt oh! Diesel show out in a big way, mentored by Myron Reed, and then to the outside goes Prima Donnie. Prima Donnie hit hard on the way out. 
I've seen Diesel go toe to toe with the likes of Trey Lamar and Matt Cross. Undertaker, Bret Hart. Not Matt Diesel. The, the guy in the ring. The guy in the corner in the green. A man oh, who, look at these two big oh, men. Oh, yeah, check this out. Antonio Bomani and Ben Bishop. Antonio Bomani is not used to having to look up at somebody. Not at all. And the crowd just loves that they're, they're seeing meat on meat. Swing and a miss. Oh, on oh, one shot. Takes six foot 12 off his feet. I'm not sure if anybody can eliminate either of these men but the other. And Bishop hangs on, hangs on. Oh, check that up, buddy. Wow, skins the cat. That is scary agility. Oh, that Bomani. is a big man to choke slam. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Who's going to choke slam who? That's a great question. Ends in a stalemate, at least for the moment. Bishop now. Oh! Elevate! What's got to be what? 330? 350? That was impressive. There's no way around that. That was impressive. And Bomani. Wow. Eliminated by one man. And only one man it could be. You take Bishop out of this match, and Bomani is probably going to win. Well, but will Bishop win? There, could Manser, Diesel, and Cabana work together to eliminate him? I'm not sure if that's likely. It's every man for themselves, and I'm not sure if anybody can trust anybody. Check out the lightning fast agility, the impact that Mac Diesel brings to the table. Mac Diesel far and away the least experienced in this situation. About a four year pro. Oh, and he, well. And there he goes, but man, a great showing. Vance Warner gave him a little, uh, little scratch in the oh, eyes, yeah. if you will. Well, Vance with the eye poke god, he takes pride in that. But Cole Cabana now, the series of jabs, and a flip flop and fly! Oh, flip flop and boot to the face. Yeah, more on the flop than the, than the flip of the fly. Manser creating an alliance here. Well, this, matches like this create strange bedfellows. Hey, let's get rid of Cole Cabana and settle amongst ourselves, I guess. Well, remember, one more person to be eliminated, and then it transitions into a, a, just a traditional wrestling match. That's a great point, and you won't need to figure out how to throw him over the top rope then. Vance in the ground! Whoa! Oh. Manser back to Bucksnord without a championship. And Cabana, Cabana the roll up, Cabana no. The match has officially turned into a regular champ, a regular uh, uh, wrestling match. You saw Cabana go for the pin. No. Now he's going for a choke slam. That's probably a less than ideal thing to do. I wouldn't advise. Wait a minute, here's Mance. Mance is not in this match anymore. Oh. DDT. Mance Warner. Taking it personally, the Cabana eliminated. And look at this, oh. Cobra clutch into a slam from way high in the air. We have a new inaugural first ever. Unbelievable. A victory for Ben Bishop, who maybe was unstoppable this whole time. And no matter how many legendary names win the Prime Championship, only one name comes first. That's the name we'll remember, Ben Bishop. There can only be one first. Big Trouble, Ben Bishop is your first ever Square Circle Expo Prime Champion. And what I want to know is who can beat him as the years go on. Well, I don't know. Matt Cardona is apparently not allowed back, so he might hold that championship forever. I'm not even going to go back to that. Moving to the future. Still so much more to come, including the New Japan Pro Wrestling World Television Championship. Matt Riddle against another internationally traveled sensation in Jake Oman. But Josh, that's not all.
No, it's not. We have the Squared Circle Expo Women's Championship match. Freya the Slay is the champion against Shauna Reed. That is going to be a knockdown drag out match. And our main event, no. Squared Circle Expo Championship, Nick Nemeth and Ultimo Dragon one on one. It's a dream you. match. You didn't know you needed it until it was announced. And the NWA World Heavyweight title will be decided. EC3 and Carson Drake. And it's just a heartbeat away the history he made the longest running world title could change hands tonight could you imagine that carson drake walking out nwa world's heavyweight champion tonight it could happen this Find could out. happen let's head to the ring oh How do you spell handsome? D-R-A-K-E, look at him, Carson Drake. And a man who's got experience facing men that have held the NWA World title last year, it was Nick Aldis. This year, EC3, a five-year pro, 24 years of age, a physical specimen who has now found himself in NWA Developmental Exodus Pro in Cleveland, Ohio. Carson Drake checks every box on that what list when you're looking for a perfect, complete wrestler. Absolutely, reminds me a lot of myself. Carson Drake, I mean, what? Nothing, please continue, I don't have the energy. An incredible talent, and tonight could be an opportunity. That's the type of thing you get at an event like this, Squared Circle Expo. Who knows when, when he would get an opportunity like this for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship otherwise. Oh, without question. Right, he's in the NWA, he's making, look at this. The over man, because he's over, man. I get it, I, and he is. I cannot take anything away from EC3, who in many respects is a self-made man time and again. And you can trace that NWA World's title to 1905. You can trace it as the same title that Harley Race held and Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair and Dory Funk Jr. on down the line. But he's feeding off of that fan. That fan thinks he's doing something he's not. And you see three championships, the one around his waist, that's the one on the line. That is, as you mentioned, the oldest championship there is, the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. But he is also the OVW National Champion and the Premier Wrestling Men's Champion. Even if I don't agree how he won that championship from Matt Cardona either. Matt Cardona's oh, getting screwed left and right. Let's get the introduction. Can't argue that. All facts. Apparently, he can't even, it's not premium, it's premier wrestling. He's a premier wrestling champion. Put a little respect on it. Well, EC3 has brought respect, has brought prestige to each of those championships in his own way. But the most important one here and now 
and for many decades in history is that NW World's title. And Josh, in 120 years, I don't know if that title has been wrapped around a more sculpted physique than EC3 possesses. I mean, if we were to take Matt Cardona out of the mix, former NWA World's Heavyweight Champion as well, never lost the title, but I digress. EC3, tremendous shape, tremendous athlete. You know, we're proud to have him as the premier champion. And Billy Corgan and the entire NWA, and the entire wrestling business has got to be so proud to have him as the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. But Carson Drake, he is young, he is, look at him, he looks, he looks like a professional wrestler. All he's missing is that 10 pounds of gold around his waist. Carson Drake is nothing but upside. Carson Drake is nothing but money waiting to be counted. This man has all the tools. He feels in his mind, tonight is his night. It may be, but if it's not, it's not far away. EC3, obviously the veteran here, EC3. Unlike Carson Drake, EC3 is no stranger to championship matches. He's been champion. As we mentioned the three he has. Of course, the one, the biggest one, being defended right now in the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. But he has held championships all over the world. EC, but Carson Drake does not have that type of experience. No matter how talented you are, no matter how skilled you are, experience is always, always, always going to shine through. Beautiful arm drag by EC3 and into it, perhaps a headlock. Huge collision, and you see that mass, that momentum of EC3. And we talk about all the boxes that Drake checks. So, too, you could say about EC3 for many, many years. And you mentioned that experience to put him over the top. And it's over the top of the back goes Carson Drake, high impact. And to the floor. Carson Drake, take a breather. Not what uh, Carson Drake wanted to get out of the blocks here. Well, that one. That facial expression tells the story, that, that sticking impact from EC3 as Drake gets the scenic tour all around Rick's side. Oh! EC3 ducks. Carson Drake may have broken his hand. Look at the handprint on that ring post. Oh, look at the handprint on his chest. Yeah, EC3 a step ahead of the game, maybe baited the younger man in a little bit to make that mistake. You know Carson is coming in very eager. You know he's coming in uh, very offensive minded. There's another attempt by Drake to be offensive minded. But again, EC3 baits him in to make that error. Cross body, full throttle impact. EC3, so hard hitting. Drake to the outside. No wasted movement. That's why he is the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Battle. Drake trips up. EC3 and beginning to focus on that knee. Shot down the dominant physique of EC3 and Carson Drake. So relentless in his offense. He has to be relentless. He's in there with EC3. He said it, Josh, he only had one opportunity. Don't know when the next one's gonna come, if it's gonna come. You can look at Drake and say, yeah, it's probably gonna come, but you don't know. That could be tomorrow, could be in five years. Drake should make the most of this opportunity. And certainly, as EC3 finds himself in a bad way, Drake has gotten everything he's ever wanted in his life. He's been able to purchase it. He's been able to barter for it. He's been able to use power and influence to attain it. But you, you know who that reminds me of? Who's that? A young EC3. Yeah. It reminds me of a young EC3. And maybe if you look, maybe Carson Drake can look almost in, into the future here at EC3 because what happened was eventually you realized you may think you can buy it, but you can't. You can't buy that self-respect. That's something that EC3 had to go out and earn. He earned these championships. And Carson Drake, I think he is a hell of a talent. And right now, he's very fond of himself, as he should be. But eventually, one day he's gonna look in the mirror and he's gonna say, 
do I really respect myself? Did I earn anything? I don't care how cocky you are, how rich you are. Eventually, you need to know that you earned, you earned your spot. And that's what he's trying to do here tonight. That heel trip by the champion. EC3 really started to earn that respect once he distanced himself from his aunt. Carson Drake is not shy about the money he possesses. Is not shy about the privileges it gains him. He's hired the best personal trainers. He's hired the best wrestling coaches. He has put himself in this position. Why? Because he can. Because he believes deep down in his heart he is better than each and every person in this building. And he should believe that. Everyone who gets in the ring should believe that they're the best. They should want to be the best. And they should take advantage of every opportunity they have to be the best. But he's in there with the best right now. He's yep. in there with the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. No matter what any of these fans or anybody might think of EC3, he's the champion. He has proven it. When you hold those 10 pounds of gold, you're the best. And that, right now, Carson Drake is finding that out. Drake in the corner hard. He's dazed. EC3 takes advantage of that reprieve. It wasn't long, but it was all the champion needed. He worked it. He keeps going after that knee right there. EC3 has that vertical base, has a Lufes press. Talk about your legendary NWA champions of years gone by. EC3 gingerly walking forward, and maybe the damage to that knee is what enabled Drake to counter that fireman's carry and drop the DDT. Drake has been through a war, his look in figure four. Again, classic NWA World Champion playbook, Buddy Rogers, Ric Flair. And Jeff Jarrett as well. Even Dusty Rhodes was known to, to pull out a figure four leg lock. That's true. And Dusty never grabbed the ropes like that though. Carson Drake. You're insulting his reach? Looking for everyone. I'm, I'm insulting Carson's integrity. Could you imagine, though, the headlines it would make if EC3 surrendered the world title with a figure four leg lock? It could happen. EC3, that, that knee has got to be hurting. Carson Drake's been putting a lot of, a lot of pressure on it. Well, the referee match. caught him. Carson flew too close to the sun and got caught. And EC3 reverses the pressure and the momentum. Yeah, notice how long it took Carson to break that hold. He milked it for but he could. But EC3 comes back, showing that tenacity. That spine buster connects. And down across the knee. Oh, oh my God. That kick sends Drake for a loop. God. Oh, no, he heard his... Carson Drake now hurt his own knee. Well, get a medic down here. It's eye for an eye. It's it's veteran against youth in this matchup, and EC3 knows how to break down a body as what well. Oh. oh, hey, Carson Drake went downstairs. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, we need some help still. Carson Drake's knee, I'm very concerned about it. Oh, thank God. His knee's better. I, well, oh, yeah. And there's the stroke. A Carson Drake specialty. We got a new world champion. Oh, EC3. Oh, my God. Just barely. Less than half a count away from history being made. Carson Drake's trying to, he's heading outside the ring. That's, hey, that's just none, grabbed all three championships. None of those are yours yet. Yet might be the key word there. It could be, but the referee's looking right at a wrestling title in his hand. Oh, EC3 downstairs. What? EC3. Well, Turnabout's fair desperate. play. Eye for an eye, a knee for a knee, a, a, you know, et cetera. But EC3 looking at his property. He's now got the OVW National Championship. Oh. 
And another that shot. For, well, yeah. Toss that 10 pounds of gold over there. Oh! oh. AC3, he's been going for broke. One for center. EC3 retains the world title. Well, AC3 lives to fight another day. He's NWA World Heavyweight Champion. No one's gonna confuse the last 60 seconds of that matchup with Dory Funk Jr. and Jack Briscoe, to be sure. But bottom line is, EC3 does retain the NWA World title and does leave with three prestigious titles intact. All right, ask for the music to be cut. Kind of respect from EC3. I think he appreciated the effort from Carson Drake. After all we've seen, it takes a big man to do that. Well, that, I don't think we want to do that, that gentleman in the crowd suggested. Oh. Whoa. Well, that was. EC3 hit him with the Premier Championship. Ah, hit him with no. the OVW National Championship. EC oh, oh, come on. That, that, that's that's the referee down. Oh, and there's the NWA title that's ahead of Carson Dre. Legendary referee Joe Copaz just got pie faced. That's completely out of line. Don't disrespect EC3. That man is ready to snap at any minute. Oh, come, but you can't put your head in an official. And EC3's got way over the line with this assault. This is not how a world champion carries or conducts himself. I don't care who it is. This is over the line by EC3. He's a, look, he had a hey, hey, come on. No, no, he didn't, listen, he didn't. Wait a minute here. Wait a minute here. I don't want any trouble. I just. The match is over. Okay, I just. The match is over. It's. I am the NWA World Championship. I am the most prestigious championship. I win. Well, that, listen, Jimmy Hurt. I'm so here, come here, come here. Look, I, uh. You all right, Joe? Look, I got. All right, look, I, you know, we, we have our fun out here. We don't always get along, but that was, that was, uh. I, I apologize for that. Joe, I apologize for that. That never should have happened. That absolutely never should have happened. I don't know what the hell that was. It was not, um, listen, I hope every board of directors was watching that for all those titles. I hope Freddie Prince Jr. was watching that. This is the face of your company. This is the face of your brand. No, look, I, I I'm not a wrestler. He He's obviously, he got, he got heated in there. And I, look, I don't, I'm not saying that was a good thing. I'm not, I disagree with that. He never should have put his hands on you. I apologize on behalf of Premier and, and everybody here at Square Circle Expo. I, look. I need a minute. I need a minute. Well, look, we have uh, joined here again. I'm sorry. Look, look, I'm a little. I was not expecting that. But coming up next, listen, we have the new Japan Pro Wrestling World Television Championship is on the line. Champion Matt Riddle defends against Jake Oman. I mean, this is, I'm excited for this. Joe, just take a minute. Have some water or something. Like that. that was Again, very intense. So that was inappropriate. Yeah. That was not, it wasn't. Wildly right. inappropriate. Uh, and he is, I'm getting word that he's kind of tearing things up in the back as well. He's obviously a little unstable. And again, I apologize. He's a bit out of control, but uh, hopefully let's we see. can. Yeah, let's see if we, can, if we can kind of get back on track here. Um, well, here comes Jake Oman. What an opportunity for Jake Oman here tonight. Well, yeah, and I say I will do my best as a professional to move forward. I, I apologize for that disruption and my reaction to that, but 
No, Jake. listen, it wasn't right. We understand. But look, we're going to move on here. Hey, hey I want to talk about how Jake Oman wants to just drop the title picture. How Jake Oman wants to not only be a future Square Circle Expo champion, just as they've been in the past, targeting Nick Nemeth earlier, but he could go international. This man's been to some 32 different countries. He's one of the most well-traveled anywhere in the sport. And to do all of that as a free agent is a huge accomplishment. To me, there, there's no ceiling for Jake Oman. There isn't, but there is an opponent by the name of Matt Riddle. And he's going to have to get through the original bro to make all that happen. The king of bros, Matt Riddle. Now I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna say something, this might not be a popular opinion. I don't get Matt Riddle. I don't get it. He's what? smiling all the time. What does he have to be happy about? He's mellow, he's laid back, he's chill. Just vibe with him, man. Matt Riddle has a smile on his face outside of the ring. He's mild-mannered, but inside the ring, he can become one rude dude. I was told a long time ago, never trust a man in sandals. I see. But I stand by that, especially pink sandals and with, you know. You can trust the Not bad. Look, I love pink. Brett the Hitman Hard and all, but yeah. But I'm just saying, it doesn't go with his outfit. Okay, you're going to complain that he's clashing now. Look at That's this, look at that outfit. They, look, he's, he's glittery and shining. Kind of a... Because he's a champion! Not necessary. You're mad he rocks you that look. Just, he rocks that look better than you. No. I wouldn't be caught dead wearing something like that. Hey, what's up, bro? I see there this guy everywhere. There you go, bro. Hey, good to see you, bro. That's... Oh, Matt Riddle. Such a great mood, but mood's about to change. He got distance on that one. That's impressive. Listen to this reaction, the infectious mood throughout this crowd. Matt Riddle has reigned as New Japan Pro Wrestling World Television Champion the past 37 days. Defeated Hiroshi Tanahashi for that title. Already successful defenses against Big Bad Dude Tito and also uh, Kosei Fujita of the TMDK group. That was just 24 hours ago in Tampa in Major League Wrestling. We'll see if the arduous schedule of Riddle comes back to bite him tonight. That's a great point. You know, he's not sleeping in his own bed. He's traveling. For, I mean, he's putting his body through hell one night for MLW, and then here he is, Squared Circle Expo. Meanwhile, he's carrying around that championship for New Japan Pro Wrestling. But Matt Riddle, look, he's no stranger to a tough schedule, no stranger to, I mean, this is what he lives on, just getting in the ring beating people up, getting beat up. And an important thing to keep in mind, Josh, is that in a New Japan Pro Wrestling World Television Championship, it is a 15-minute time limit. It's very offensive-minded. You can't rest on your laurels. You can't wait for your opponent to make a mistake. you got to go full forward, full throttle. Absolutely. Take a look at that. There was a front chancery that turned into this. Look at this. Control of that. There's no, no separation between the two. Riddle is such a great grappler. He's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Of course, some may remember Riddle from the UFC. He was victorious in his four most recent UFC fights before he left the organization. He had won 
fight of the night, had won tap out of the night, and he was ranked very highly in takedown defense and percentage of punches landed. I believe in both, he was in the UFC top 10. Incredibly talented, but let, hey, let's not uh, sleep on, on Jake Ullman here either. Hey, Former saying. Squared Circle Expo heavyweight champion. Look, this is this is a matchup, as you mentioned before, just the style of it, this 15 minute time limit. This is a hard hitting style. Yeah, Ullman just got done training wrestlers and I believe Rome and Prague. He's going back, I believe it was to, to Finland in a week. This man logs more miles than most full-time contracted wrestlers. He might not even know what day of the week it is. Well, it may be, it, it's championship day. That may be all that matters. And what a one-two punch it could be if maybe tonight it's New Japan World Television title and then tours of New Japan to follow. And maybe a year from now, maybe sooner if they cross paths, it could be Omen against the winner of tonight's main event somewhere. It could be. Look, Jake Omen was a tremendous champion for Squared Circle Expo, but the, the reality of it is Jake Omen has to get through Matt Riddle first. I'm a fan of both of these men. I might not get the happy-go-lucky lifestyle that Matt Riddle lives. You know, I, I might not understand why he needs to wear something so flashy. But the reality is, this is a hell of a talent as he, look at that. Into the monkey flip, into going, looking yeah. for that arm bar. Yeah, that cross arm break that you need to tell me. Of course, Josh wouldn't understand why someone's living their life happy. I don't, it doesn't surprise me at all. But here's what you need to get. I guess he's ignoring all the, all the travesties in the world, like Matt Cardona being screwed. Here's what you need to get. Matt Riddle is so proficient on the mat, he knows how to tie you up and torch you. He's got that long frame, that leg reach. He can tie you up and leave you defenseless. And he's not just lanky, he's not skinny. He's got a lot of power and muscle behind that as well. It's a perfect combination to take down. Omen looking for maybe a trying to choke here. He's got to keep his own shoulders off the canvas. Riddle now to a vertical base using that power. You know, you talked about Matt Riddle's history in the UFC, in mixed martial arts, his training in that world. Jake Omen, look, being in here with a guy, he's not allowing that to intimidate him. And that is impressive. You have to give a lot of credit to Omen because this is not. Any, uh, you know, an average man would be intimidated. An average wrestler would be intimidated by not just the fact that Matt Riddle's champion, not just the fact that everything he's done in professional wrestling. Tag team with Randy Orton got to got to travel and study from arguably one of the best professional wrestlers. There you see those long legs again, trying to choke off the air passages of Jake Omen. Notice Riddle bridging up, keeping his own shoulder off of the canvas as he attempts to tighten it in Omen. And Omen through with a Boston crowd, great counter. Wow, look at that. He's got the, got the hands locked, got those fingers locked. And Riddle quickly to a rope. And Josh, uh, uh, to your point, the lack of intimidation factor, I think Jake Omen still looks at this as his house, as something he helped build. He beat JTG the first night here. He made that title what it is today. We're a Cardona, we're a Nemeth, we're an Ultimo Dragon want to be champion, and Omen knows he can do it again. Yeah, I mean, listen, that championship means something. Square Expo, Square Circle Expo Championship means something. A guy like, like Ultimo Dragon, or however you choose to pronounce it, does not, does not just come out of here for anything, for any random championship. But this is, a, this is a, but right now we're talking about the New Japan Pro Wrestling Television Championship, and that, that is a prestigious, I mean, they're all, we just talked about 10 pounds of gold, not to bring him up again, and I apologize, but we just talked about 10 pounds of gold. Look at the championships here tonight at Squared Circle Expo. And Brian battle Champions. press, two count only. And now that's a tremendous point, certainly. And I believe a moment ago we had the first time call from our ring announcer. And I think at that point, Owen picked up the tempo a little bit. Owen got a little bit more urgent in what he is attempting to do, knowing that Riddle doesn't have to beat Omen. Omen has to beat Riddle. That's a great point. Look, the, the last the last five minutes went by so quickly that when you hear there's only 10 minutes remaining, you realize, oh man, all right, I got to step on the pedal. I got to get in here. 
because Matt Riddle is another guy. God, look at those forearm shots. Matt Riddle is another guy. You are not, if you're in there thinking I'm going to outlast Matt Riddle, you're, you've already lost. Oh my oh, God! High round kick right to the chest cavity brought Omen to his knees. Again, there you see that long reach and the dexterity of Riddle to his advantage and Omen just trying to shut it down. Look at that, right before locking that hold in, he brings his form, and now again and again, bring the point of that elbow into the top of the pectoral, and into, I mean, that's gonna lock up that entire arm. Notice the distance Omen has between Riddle's body and his own. That's going to constrict Riddle's options for defense or counter. But Riddle to his speak quickly. Check that out. Omen just doesn't have the leverage he normally does. Wow. One step German suplex. The crowd is kind of split here between who to cheer for. Now fans have watched the uprising of Omen, but Matt Riddle is an athlete in a category all his own. style shot right now. Exploder sends Omen down center ring and those eyes now. This is the rude dude. This is Matt Riddle in the zone. Yeah, you looked at that face. There wasn't a smile to be seen there. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look back on what I said in the beginning about not understanding him, but I'm, I think I am starting to get it because I think part of that, look at this, here we go. Fisherman suplex, can he get him over? He locked the hands. But it wasn't enough. He didn't have those hands locked ahead of time. But I, as I hate to, you know, interrupt myself, but Matt Riddle with a kick right to the back. Matt Riddle came out here with a smile. I didn't even get it. But now I'm starting to figure it out. That whole, yeah, that's his personality. He's fun-loving. It also kind of makes you go, ah, this guy can't be that bad Ooh. in the ring. He can't hit that hard. Hard elbow there by Omen. I, I think it speaks to Riddle having his center, keeping his frame of mind, his composure, two count only. Riddle's not gonna let anybody rent space in his head. He's gonna live life his own way. But right now, it's Jake Omen dictating the pace of this matchup. Very reminiscent of a, of a Hall of Famer of a legend, Rob Van Dam. He was very, you know, all smiles, happy to be here. Hey, man. I think that's the only thing they have in common. I can't even think of one other thing they could possibly have in common. Oh, Mark Backbreaker. And here comes Omen, drive oh, suplex. That'll do it. Oh, and again, we talk about headlines could be made here tonight. Imagine the Japanese media in New Japan Pro Wrestling jumping on a title change at an event as prestigious as this. Just the fact that, you know, New Japan does not allow all their championships to be defended just anywhere. They really don't. They're very particular about where their championships can be defended, and that speaks to the quality of SCX. Yeah, without question. This is uh, only the third time Riddle has defended that title here in this country. Riddle now the worst for wear. That composure has been eradicated. It's a courtesy. I'll tell you, this match is so fast-paced, I didn't even realize 10 minutes have gone by. It is crunch time now for both men, and Riddle pops up at barely one. That's gamesmanship. That's a mind game sent to Omen. You don't have the as beat as you think you do. And if you're Jake Omen, you got four minutes and change left. How does your strategy change this late in the game? I think you just have to stay on top of your opponent. That's what you have to do. You have to start start thinking about submission holds. Start thinking about quick pin combinations, right? Because at this point, it's going to be tough to just say, hey, let me knock him out. Oh, jackhammer. And there's a near fall. Those hard-hitting moves just like that. That's what you need to do. You're Jake Ullman or you're Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle, again, like you said, he doesn't have to win this match to retain the championship. 
But again, is that, this is only the third time in this country that he's defended this championship. Does he want to lose it? Or does he just want to keep it by like just letting the clock run out? You know he wants to win it because that's the kind of competitor he is. But the championship advantage is in play. But no advantage here! Oh, and oh man, and got cover. Super and that's And right there he has to cover him. Because that is precious time that he's missing. Jake Oman needs to be on top of him. One, two, three. You need to take advantage of the opportunity to knock the wind out of Matt Riddle. To maybe have him not understand, but I think it knocked the wind out of Jake Oman as well. Riddle, the shoulder up. And well, there we go. That's what you need. Submission. Because we have, what, maybe three minutes left, two and a half minutes left. You have just enough time. Well, to that point, notice how Oman pounced on his man. Did not waste a single second. He's got great ring positioning. And Riddle bridges back to chop the shoulders for two. Oh! Man, oh, Oman's oh, body went God. limp. Oman collapsed. And now, Riddle with a super proton! Oh. What? Whoa! Matt Riddle's face tells the story. Riddle would have bet the world this match was over. I, he's not the only one. But you never, ever underestimate a man like Dick Oman. The crowd firmly behind Omen right now. How can you not have respect for Jake Omen after that? Oh, wait a what? minute. Matt Riddle going for the bro stone. Omen trying to kick his way free. Wait a minute. This could be it. Riddle just got driven with one of his own moves. Oh, man. How close was that? Check Riddle out. The managed to tuck that head at the yeah. very last second. That is the only way that he is still... Not that that made it hurt any less, but that allowed him to be able, he's not going to get that stinger. And 120 seconds from the end of the road. Shining Wizard Riddle kicks out. 120 seconds, but he only needs three. And he can't find them in succession over and over again, trying to expend whatever energy is left in Riddle. Yeah, the exhaustion of the kick out. People don't think about that sometimes, just how exhausting that can be, especially at this point in the match. But look at this. And neither man is protecting a proverbial lead. These men are going for That's victory. It. This Inside is a shame. cradle. Riddle reverses. Back and forth. And back to a stalemate. Drop step again. Roll up Riddle. Traps him. Two count. Oh, Riddle went for that drop step again and was met with a knee of Omen. Oh, there's a knee of Riddle. Respond in kind, does the pro. Somehow, Omen managed to kick out of that last knee and that last maneuver off the top. But that knee may have done it. That might be it. It's Riddle Wait a minute, no, oh, Omen playing possum. Oh, it was playing possum and he nearly beat him. Ah. Omen, rapid fire looking northern like suplex. With a bridge, look at Oh, Texas oh, wait a minute. Style. And Riddle, Riddle's got that guillotine choke. He's got the body That's lock it. in. That was not a tap, that was not a tap. Not a tap, not a tap. Omen saying He's repositioning no. himself. Omen's holding on. Yeah, great call. But there's not many options from here. Riddle's got that cinched in deep. The best Omen can do at this point is try and hold on. He try is. and hold on to not take an L. And keep his consciousness. There's one. Omen is fading. Two, wait a minute. He's holding up. Well, wait a minute. That's it. I, I, I think we've gone the duration. That That's arm it. was dropping. That arm was in the process of dropping. I don't know if it was or not. If this match went 15.05, we may have had a decisive winner. They're trying for five more minutes. I mean, these are not. The, this is not something that Adolfo or Ed can. No. I think we would need uh, some extensive meetings with New Japan Pro Wrestling to sanction a return matchup. Uh, Riddle's asking for the mic.
Cut the music here. He's asking to cut the music. Wrestling television champion. Why was, why was that necessary? It was a shout out to an old friend. Oh, that's great. I'm gonna shout. You know, I have an old friend who used to punch people in the face. You want me to shout out to him right now? No, no, it's not appropriate. Here. I'm what? sorry. I didn't mean to bring. I didn't Take mean to bring up. that back up. Take it up with Matt Riddle because still to come, we have the Squared Circle Expo Championship matchup. What a dream match this is. Two of the best athletes. Not the match I was it. dreaming to see. And Val the match with dreaming. us. Now we got an incredible championship matchup still to come as well with the women. Very excited for the SEX Women's Championship for Freya the Slayer defending her title up against the challenger, Shauna Reed. And we're going to break Welcome it back. all down. I want to apologize for how he treated you earlier. Oh, stop. Uh, I'm yes, sorry. he was very lovely to me. And he shouldn't have been. I apologize. <laughs> Is this when we get to uh, say hello to an old friend by punching a new one? No, listen. Because, Joe, I'd like to say hello to you, Joe, my old me, friend. Joe, give me your glasses. Let's exactly. say hello to Slick Rick and get the next matchup in the ring. Give me your glasses. You can't hit some of your glasses. Okay. Well, here we go. Oh, it's filling up. Oh, I guess Riddle's celebrating already. Oh, that's just a smoke machine. There we go. For the Squared Circle Expo Women's Championship. We're waiting right now. Here comes the challenger, Shauna Reed. Well, I know Shauna Reed has made a reputation of herself throughout the Midwest for many, many years and a worthy contender, but uh, Val, what's the breakdown? What does Shauna need to look for in this matchup? You know, it's definitely going to be a challenge for her, but I know that she has it in her. I mean, she's looking up against a huge foe of hers. They have some serious bad blood between them. She's going to have to come out swinging hard because I know Freya's got her eyes set on Shauna Reed, the snake in the grass. Here we go. Squared Circle Expo Women's Champion, former OVW Women's Champion. And someone who captured that championship a year ago, defeating Allison Kay, Ari Alexander, Haley Shadows, Heather Owens, Kylan King, Marty Bell, and yeah, even Shauna Reed. Nobody could stop Freya the Slayer, Val. Yeah, Freya the Slayer picking it up. Eight-woman scramble right there. I mean, it was insane. Not only that, but these two, as I said, have some serious bad blood. Did you know that Shauna Reed was the one to crack the clavicle of Freya the Slayer, requiring her...
Shauna sent the Queen of the North back up to Fairbanks, Alaska for seven weeks, requiring a plate and six screws embedded in that clavicle. But can we talk about the fact that it was only seven weeks? Only How seven many weeks. people can say that they came back from something like that in only seven weeks? Yeah, it's pretty insane. It's pretty insane. You can see the six foot one giant herself saying, let's go. We're going to test it out. This feet of strength right here. I would also add to your point, Josh, as far as how many athletes would be able to cause such injury on such a complete athlete such as Freya the Slayer. I mean, the physical dominance that she displays, the power, it's so overwhelming. Not just that, but she still finished the match. 20 minutes in with a fractured clavicle. That is no joke at all. That's not somebody I'd want to get back in the room with. Yeah, I'm actually a big concern for the safety of Sean Reed. I mean, yeah, you called her a snake in the grass earlier. You know, tell us a little bit more about Sean Reed, a little bit more about her personality and her attitude. Well, she's well known for being a pretty little psycho over here. She is much beloved in the Midwest, but there is no love lost between her and Freya. This well, look at that. Look at the strength of Freya. And again, look, you got to look at the strength of Shauna. Shauna having a bridge up on her neck. We saw Riddle do so expertly a moment ago. Uh, Val, would you suggest, because of that previous injury, that psychologically Shauna may have an edge on Freya that, that no other challenger would? I mean, I would say out of anybody in the women's division of the Spring Triple Expo, yes, perhaps, but Freya has been training and waiting for this moment. It has been a year since she won the inaugural women's champion here at the Spring Circle Expo, and she has been waiting to take down Sean Reed. I mean, she told me she could not wait for this moment. So Look at really, that kick to the face right there. Both athletes, a major point to prove, professionally and personally. Yeah, I mean, Sean Reed has been traveling the entire world. She's been oh. picking up titles in Scotland with UK Wrestling. She's been honing her craft overseas. Oh, my God. Each cannonball in the corner. She's about to out. head back for seven weeks of her own. <laughs> being the only, uh, Alaska's only female wrestler. Now, you don't see a lot of top prospects come out of Alaska, and a lot of times you see, especially on the independent level, sometimes geography hurts you if there's not a very active scene. There's not an active scene in Alaska, but that didn't stop Freya. Nothing was going to get in the way of her getting hurt. No, oh, not. nobody get in the way of the turnbuckle either. Dusty Rhodes, <coughs> Dustin Rhodes, excuse me. She's also wrestled Rick Baker, the likes of Anna Jay. Oh, look at that. I appreciate the fact Sean is always trying to level up and learn a new hold, as it were. But a lot of times you see those athletes go over to Europe, go over on excursion, and they come back a different competitor. That's really where they, they travel three, four, five runs off that ladder. We'll see if that's what Sean Arena has done, if she's in a Position. Looking for a tarantula right the now. The title, check this out. Oh my gosh, just stunning. Wow. And that is a, a major size discrepancy to be able to navigate the frame of Freya in that way to trap her in that hole. Yeah, but excellent work being wily with her small wired frame, but that does not matter when you're able to use the ropes to your advantage like that. Oh, wow. Compact and impactful aimed at her target and connected with precision. And again, as you said, traveling overseas, you pick up so much as you experience so much, so many different styles traveling abroad than Shauna has. We saw some frustration from Shauna a minute ago, hanging on the mat there. I think she may have, I think that that may have taken a little bit more out of her than she wanted to at Missile Drop. Shauna came in a half a step slow, and, and Trey was able to move out of the way and, and trap Shauna in the ropes. All you need is one second, and your opponent can capitalize, and much like the tarantula earlier, an illegal hold, but the champion getting full advantage out of it. Freya, this one, she's having fun. Oh, 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 God. Deafening thud to the chest of Sean Reed. Nowhere for Sean to go trapped up in those ropes. That reverberation, that thud. Freya to the outside, though. Felt throughout her body. That's how quickly you mentioned before, just a second. That's how quickly you can change. You heard that thud, and now the next thing you know, you blink, and Freya's on the outside. 
speaks to Shauna's uh, wherewithal and her ability to withstand pain, how bad she wants to be champion. Rhea blocks that kick. Oh, one of her own. Rhea wrapping Shauna up in the ropes, dragging her down to the apron. And it's cliche to say it's the hardest part of the ring, but it's wooden boards, it's steel beams. Yeah, there's a reason people boards. say it. It yeah. might be cliche, yeah, it but it's true. It doesn't look like it's feeling good at all. Oh, and that ring post. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in the ring post for also an equally hard part of the ring. And let's keep in mind that post is not rounded. There's a metal edge just dug into the kidneys of Shauna. Look Sean at this. Oh. And to do it again, but face first as Shauna counters. Again, gonna say the ring post. Equally a very hard part of the ring. Uh, Freya Freya hit hard. Yeah, yeah, she hit hard there. And now with both athletes hurt, the official begins her count. Well, yeah, again, begins, she's at yeah. seven already. Going to the eight count. She skipped one through five, I think. Well, the battle was so fierce on the outside, we were all overlooking it. And the count breaks. Lucky for both competitors, they were not overlooking it. They, they were still cognizant of the count from the referee. Shauna had to readjust for this dive. Freya was walking out of harm's way and met her with a shot between the ropes. That was enough, that readjustment right there was enough. She had no choice other than to not jump. Well, here we have Shauna getting wrapped up again in the ropes. Oh, Her God. But the axe kick to the back as well. All oh, that chop axe kick. Oh, off with her head indeed. Freya has just, I mean, She's always been great, but just the level that she has reached at this point. Her signature choke slam. Are we going to see it? It's devastating. It's beautiful. Shauna finds a way free. Did she, though? Well, for a second, at least. Caught in the clutch. That's a place I never want to be, personally. Oh, as if Shauna was, was weightless. The backbreaker. Twisting Uranagi style into the cover. Shauna kicks out in front of Challenger. And how much damage was done to the lower lumbar region of Shauna Reed. Shauna Reed clutching it in so much pain right now as Frey is trying to get the crowd riled up behind her. Saying, I am the third circuit XP champion. I remain now and I will be going in the third XP The good news is Shauna's to her feet, but the bad news is what's going to knock her down next? Oh, no, got out of it. Look at this. Oh. Sister Abigail. Shades of the late, great Wyndham Rotunda. Look at this. And is that a kiss goodbye for the title? They're fall. So close. Is this the time that we see the pretty little psycho? Yes, here we go. Slugging and slugging and slugging. Relentless hits to the forehead of Freya. All Freya can do is just try to protect herself and cover up. It looked like she was actually able to cover up most of those. Not all of them, but most of them. Now, will this the shift in mind frame help Shauna bring out more intensity, or will she become unhinged and lose focus? She does look like she's a bit frustrated. She's now hovering above the top of her bubble. And she stayed focused enough to achieve her goal. She's calling for it. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Got caught. That is it. Good night, everybody. Shauna went down in defiance, brought her all, the woman she put on the shelf previously. But now the question is, can anybody be a physical match to Freya the Slayer? I mean, it's gonna hard to see happen. It's gonna be hard to see happen, but it'll be exciting to see what happens for a Squared Circle Expo Five. Look at that champion! Look at that Dominating towering force. presence. She almost touches the ceiling as she celebrates. Well, Val, thank you so much for being here with us. Oh my goodness, I was that something it. nice? Yes. Make sure you do your taxes. I hear that. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you ill? Are you okay? What? No, I think he's been hit in no, the No, I'm just saying, times. thank that, you. That is not Al Capone. Stop it's making Val that Capone. Val I don't know. What am I supposed to say? But thank you so much for allowing me to help represent women's wrestling. I love every opportunity I can to do so. So nice. thank I you mean, so much. I mean, this is probably your last one. Ultimo Dragon, this to me, this is...
This is a career highlight for me. And for him as well, but this is a but step up oh. for me personally. That was the nicest thing we were going to get out of you, and I have Ultimo Dragon pull out a victory. Look at this respect. Many of these fans are standing. A man whose reputation is almost a mythical like proportion. You hear the stories of Nemeth has called, has scored big. Nick Nemeth, arguably one of the absolute greatest athletes in professional wrestling today. And it's tough to argue that. I mean, tremendous shape. The, the, the guy, what he can do in this ring, the high flying ability that he has, and the quickness, the speed, then you factor in the amateur wrestler that he is. The amateur wrestler, the records he set at Kent State. Quite simply, Josh, both of these men are timeless competitors. This is true. And this is a dream match. This is not the match that we were expecting even 24 hours ago. But this is happening. Introducing first the challenger from Nagoya, Japan, Ultimo Wanted man, Nick Nemeth. And tonight, it's not about showing off. Tonight, it's not about the bright lights and entertainment. This is about pro wrestling in its truest, purest form. You hear that holy you-know-what chant before the belly boom. That is how excited these fans are for this match. And we have the opportunity to call here. Notice uh, Nemeth dropping to his knees, almost getting into uh, amateur mindset, kind of coming low on Ultimo Dragon. Nemeth, you mentioned star, amateur standout, Kent State University before that at St. Edwards High School in Cleveland, Ohio. And you look at this right now as he tries to pick that leg, you look at this, and you have to wonder something, you know, if Nemeth grew up watching Ultimo Dragon. He watched him in his prime. I'm not sure that Ultimo Dragon, and not out of disrespect at all, but I'm not sure that Ultimo Dragon has spent as much time watching Nick Nemeth in the ring as Nick Nemeth has spent watching Ultimo Dragon. It's just the nature of it. Growing up as a fan, just the age difference between them, the, the time periods of when they were both in their primes. Well, I think it goes back to the point you made a couple of minutes ago about the fact that Ultimo Dragon has only had 24 hours to prepare for this matchup. Ultimo Dragon is not scouring the, uh, the internet and DVDs and whatever the case is, looking for Nemeth footage. He was looking for Cardona footage to find a weakness. He's only had uh, uh, less than a day to completely recharge his strategy because think about, it. think about all that. I'm sorry to cut yeah. you off, but think about all that time. And he never found a single weakness in that card. Oh, stop it. But now, no, I'm just saying. Let's call it what it is. Maybe we'll have another day to answer that question. Now, Nemeth again, looking to come in low, looking to single or double leg on. Oh, right, we Ultimo faded Dragon. the black. We're done. We're not done. We got a lot more still to come, I guarantee you. Oh, well, we're back, back, folks. Welcome back. Great commercial break. And, and no, this was not a lights out match because the lights went out and back on. Uh, and Nemeth now keeping himself loose. Such a textbook drop step to get underneath Dragon, but Dragon able to roll out. Great. So a counter to what I had said before is that Ultimo Dragon, while he may not have been scouting Nick Nemeth, Ultimo Dragon has been in there with some of the greats, pretty much all of the greats. Ultimo Dragon's been in there with the best of the best of the best. And it's that experience factor. And there are not a lot of people in this business you can find that are more experienced than Nick Nemeth. He's been doing this a long time. Don't let the fact of how young he is and, and how much he looks like he's still in his prime, how much he is in his prime, confuse the fact that he's been doing this a long time. Yeah, and we're talking about for Ultimo Dragon over 30 years of experience, maybe closing down 40 now at this point. Nemeth, I mean, two decades traveling the world 
and uh, a lot of time in developmental training previous to that. Nemeth. Collision. Dragon steps back and recalibrates. Still a feeling out process a little bit here, Josh. Knowing this is their first, certainly, physical meeting, knowing that neither man was prepared for the other, but that's the mark of a champion. That's the mark of a legend. You don't know what your opponent's like. You need to get in, feel them out. What feels right, what feels wrong? What feels loose, what feels weak? How do I find an opening? Amazing, lightning fast quickness. I want to know what the luchadors are able to do, how they eat, how they drink, to be able to stay in tip-top shape decades into their I career. I don't even, I think that's just something, that's just, that's their nature, that's just genetics. That's just the way this man is made. It, it's genetics. I don't, it's, I don't know that there's anything he can do. You can't, you can't do anything or train a certain way to become an ultimate dragon. Yeah. They, I mean, this guy on another level. Genetics and respect for their craft like no other in Nemeth went to the midsection. And that will slow down the legendary Ultimo Dragon. Of course, uh, that translates to the final dragon, the uh, tale being that he was the final student to study under the great Bruce Lee. And Nemeth measuring dragon. All oh, dragon caught the leg. And a dragon oh. screw leg whip. You know who that shades of? Who's that? Ultimo Dragon. There you go. Single leg pick has Nemeth down. What will it look like in the history oh, books? Oh, wow. As, as Nemeth completely tied up, has a legs figure forward, and Nemeth into a ball. Watch the shoulders as well. He's got that one shoulder up. The referee's in there checking. And oh. wrenching down, and that sent a jolt of pain up the body of Nemeth. And twisting the ankle as well. Josh, what if Nemeth goes down in history as a 24-hour champion, a dubious record? You know, look, that would be unfortunate and, and not something you would expect to have happen to a guy like Nick Nemeth. But I mean, at, at the end of the day, to lose a championship to Ultimo Dragon, that, I, it, no there are worse people you can lose a championship to, oh, right? Sure. I don't think it's anything that you would be shameful over or uh, rethink your career choice. But bottom line is, Nick Nemeth is still a proud fighter, and he didn't beat Matt Cardona. Just yeah, I agree with you. He didn't beat title. Matt Cardona. All right, that's what I said. I didn't hear the rest of it. All right, well, Nemeth's intention was not to be a one-night champion. He's not a transitional champion. His intention as was to be here and sign some autographs. His intention was not to become champion. An opportunity was provided to Nick yeah. Nemeth, and he took he took advantage of that opportunity as he should have. And now my issue he, is not with Nick Nemeth. Now that he has, he's not going to back down. He's not going to. Fate put him in this position, and Nemeth himself will make sure he stays there. Has he ever been in better shape? And that says something. Yeah, it's very hard to argue. Man who always has a flawless physique, but his, his motivation, him being Nemeth, has been second to none, even compared to his normal high stance. But let's remind let's remind everybody of something. You, know, you mentioned the fact that he could be a 24-hour champion. He oh, it looks like he's pulling at that mask. He could be a 24-hour champion. But but burying the lead in that is that he competed in a championship match against Matt Cardona last night. Sure. Ultimo Dragon did not. Ultimo Dragon was out getting, he was out getting sushi with Sonny Ono last night. Damn it, the height he gets on that elbow. And a lax cover. We're seeing a little bit. By the bit way, Sonny Ono could have invited him. I'm just saying he could have invited him. Well, I love sushi. You would have picked up the tab, maybe. I would have picked it up and handed it right to Sonny, you're right. Nemeth rear naked choke as a body sister stitched in. We saw a little cockiness, a little show-offness from Nick Nemeth a moment ago. Josh, is it a mistake? A mistake to show off? I mean, for most people, yes. For Nick Nemeth, that, that's, that's him. I mean, he's won world championships being the show off. That is who he is, so I don't know that it's the same as just your average person coming out here and being cocky and being overconfident. 
because this is just who he is. And right now, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't look like he made quite the mistake. Look at the, look at the angle, the torque of that arm being bent back. He's going to pop that pen. shoulder. No, oh, wow. I thought that was it. And, and that shot came through Dragon just kicking out of that because that shoulder was so compromised. And that, that cradle and takes him over for a near fall. That's but and here you go. He's taking a break. Maybe this is not the best idea. It's a little breather. But you gotta acknowledge what that takes out of Nick Nemeth. Look at this, he's pointing out the people in the front row here. Look, look where he's got the knee, look where he's got the, the leg, right in the throat, the shin. I didn't see that, he was just leaning fight. down for a second. Yeah, he lost his balance, right? He, exactly, oh, great please. call. See, that's why you're one of the best, Joe. Yeah, I, I knew there was one reason, I'm just sad that's it. And Nemeth, this, this may not be wise. Yeah, footwork there from Nick Nemeth. Hey, he's very nimble, he's very athletic, but this is not gonna help you beat a certified legend. Right now, I think we're getting ready. Oh, no. Yeah, Dragon will always have fight as long as he's conscious. And he will not take the disrespect of being shown up by a show off. I will say it is incredible. It is 2024. And I'm looking at Ultimo Dragon, and this could be Nitro in 96. This could be, he looks incredible. No question. I mean, you talk about Rhino not aging. Ultimo Dragon may have written a book on it. Oh! I think his spine's feeling like an 80-year-old right now after that. Is Nemeth looking to go high risk? Nemeth to the top, perched up top there. So many dangerous ways to go. Oh, no! Measure the elbow for the heart, but Ultimo Dragon steps out of harm's way. And that fighting spirit begins to course through the veins of a legend. That's one of the, you ever bang your elbow? You say, oh, you banged your, your funny bone, right? Yeah. Oh, that hurts a bit. But that's pretty much what Nick Nemeth just did, just in an intense way. And Dragon firing off those side round kicks, trying to knock off that thigh muscle. And as Dragon goes rapid fire, the back kick takes the champion down. Wow. And Nemeth is reeling off balance, sent to the floor. Oh, wait a minute. No, he's not going to do this, is he? Any number of great options here. Ultimo can pull off to perfection. I'll go oh. To, oh, he went for the Asai Moon Salt. But Nemeth grabs the leg, and Dragon hits forehead first on that ring frame. Not today, Dragon. Hard shot as Nemeth with that ferocity, the urgency, the intensity. I think Nemeth realized how close he just was to maybe being that 24-hour champion. This is a dream match that, honestly, I don't think people ever, ever expected was going to happen. Ever. Even 24 hours ago, I don't think people expected it to happen. But we're getting it, but it is as good as anybody could have predicted. Dragon reverses. Tuck the head, but Nemeth, look at Sunset Flip. I don't know, Dragon's got the pin. Drops down, chaps his shoulders, Nemeth reverses. Back to their feet. Dragon looking, Hurricane Rana. Nemeth rolls through. God, what an evenly matched contest this late in the fight. Wow. The advantage that the Dragon has spent decades and decades in, in dojos throughout the world. The advantage Nemeth has, being on a wrestling mat since he was Nemeth, a kid. Nemeth is losing his cool right now. Yeah. Nemeth feels insulted. The Dragon's still bringing the fight. Chuck oh, wow. And has the little ice truck cradle, but Nemeth out quickly. Oh. And the super kick connects. Dragon's out on his feet. And Dragon gets dropped. It's the Nick Nemeth specialty. And that'll do it. Wow. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the winner, and still the SCX Heavyweight Champion, the one man, Dan We have seen not just a great fight, but a hell of a pro wrestling contest between two men pound for pound who have trained their whole lives for nights like this. I mean, this lived up to the 24-hour hype. People have been looking at this for the last day going, I, I can't believe this is the match we're gonna get. I can't believe this is gonna happen, and it lived up to it. Every second of this match, Ultimo Dragon, I, I, I don't know that he's missed a step. I don't know that he is any worse than he ever, I, I mean, he is as good as he ever was. But Nick Nemeth, the wanted man, he's a wanted man for a reason. Everybody wants Nick Nemeth in their promotion. Everybody wants Nick Nemeth as their champion. And he just showed you why. As good as Ultimo Dragon is, tonight Nick Nemeth was one grain of sand in that hourglass better. What's what, wait happening a here? Nemeth is, is poised to keep the fight and Dragon wants none of it. Dragon's a proud man, but I think he knows when, when the fight's done. He's asking for the championship. Well, now that's a class act. Great sign of respect. A tremendous sign of respect by Ultimo Dragon. And that championship will look great around Nemeth's waist. There comes some this time to smug, come. There's this smug character, Adolfo. Adolfo, come on. A square circle expo. Tom at the top of the broadcast here to congratulate the, the face of the brand, the flag bearer. A square circle expo. Nick Nemeth and certainly Ultimo Dragon deserves his flowers as well. Wow. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, here we go. All right, Ed, finally, you know what? I have an good authority. I think what's gonna happen right here, Ed Gonzalez, he is in here. Folks, I'm, I'm getting word right now. He's about to drip Nick Nemeth of the championship. It will be returned. I'm hearing it will be returned. It will be returned to Matt Cardona. Oh, stop it, so that's oh, not gonna happen. This is what's gonna happen but right what now. What is the purpose of going to Ed Gonzalez being out here? What's the nature of this business, the main event's over. What's happening here? What? Handshake and a hug. Is this uh, turning over a new leaf? A celebration! Nemeth, Dragon, maybe the best fight in Square Circle Expo history. But now, management, athletes stand tall with Nick Nemeth as the face of Square Circle Expo as we bid you good night from Indianapolis.